daily flavors. Ted and Wally's, serving up nostalgia at its finest for over 35 years. Visit tedandwallys.com for more information. Maverick baseball and softball home openers are here. Maverick softball opens Thursday with Valparaiso at Clawson Field, and baseball opens with Portland on Wednesday at Tal Anderson Field. Get your season tickets or single game tickets by calling 402-554-MAVS or going to omavs.com slash ticks. Also, this weekend is the hockey series finale as Maverick Hockey takes on third-ranked North Dakota. Get your hockey tickets by calling the box office at 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Hi, I'm Mike Yam with NFL Network now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Longtime Cowboys left tackle Tyron Smith will be moving on from the Dallas Cowboys, according to NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport. Smith's going to be a free agent when the new league year begins on March 13th. He spent his entire 13-year career wearing the star on his helmet after being selected in the first round of the 2011 draft. Rappaport has also reported the Niners are set to hire defensive passing game nickel corners coach Nick Sorensen as their defensive coordinator. He succeeds Steve Wilkes, who the club parted ways with after one season. The Niners, they finished last season third in both rushing yards and points allowed per game. And the New England Patriots announced that it has released veteran corner J.C. Jackson after trading for him the 2023 season. The 28-year-old former Pro Bowl corner recorded 25 tackles for the Pats last year. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. While retinitis pigmentosa takes Mark's vision, his family gives him hope, whether at the family business or at home with his wife and sons. He knows he's not fighting alone. For 50 years, the Foundation Fighting Blindness has funded research into treatments and cures for blinding retinal diseases, providing hope to people with vision loss. And for Mark, winning the fight means being there for his family. The Foundation Fighting Blindness. Together, we're winning. Help us end blinding diseases at fightingblindness.org. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. A crossover is... Crossover dribble. Sing for the crossover. Kyrie Irving. Crossover in the lane. One of the most famous crossovers of all time. Behind the back, an ankle breaker on Chris Paul. Crossover. Crossover. Double crossover. The crossover continues to evolve. The crossover is brought to you by Everlow Concrete Repair in Omaha at EverlowConcrete.com. Good morning, boys. Hiya. Hiya. Good weekend. Great. Great weekend. What'd you do this weekend? I missed you this weekend. I was out of town. I You didn't call. You didn't write. <laughs> I couldn't follow your exploits. Sorry. Sorry. You were uh, front and center on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Looked like a fun atmosphere. It was a great atmosphere. Very polite. Be nice. Every Everything was yeah. really nice. Everything was really So the blue crew wasn't there. <laughs> there was one... Uh, there was one, so the student section went all the way back, and obviously they they didn't let you know, like some people just didn't make it in time, and so they had to stand up in the in the Bud Bar area, kind of where yeah. the media sits back there. There was one Marquette fan in the middle, one, oh. and he was a kid; he was probably twenty years old or something like that. Oh, now he was he was of age, and he, first bucket goes in Marquette. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, he's he, the, he was alone. <laughs> oh yeah, was he, he was, was wearing a jersey? No, he was wearing a Marquette polo, and he was the yep guy. <laughs> yep, the yep guy. Yep, that's right. Was it Frank Caliendo's son? <laughs> <laughs> was uh, that takes some man cojones to go yeah. solo? Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know, it was it, the the special the reputation just, that Creighton's uh, fans have these days. He must have been with he must have been with some Creighton people because they just yeah. laughed at him. Yeah. You know, they they just laughed at him. Yeah. So, so like, every, you know everybody what? was respectful. That's good. Hey, we're both, we both get it. The schools we go to, when we come up there, you know, you can sleep on our floor. <laughs> that's right. Good. It looked like great atmosphere on TV. It was I mean, a lot of a fun. a great way to go out. It was a lot of fun for sure. Close it out at the end. Baylor Shireman, no look threes. Oh yeah. That's when you know. Doing the whole thing. Just kind of got something going on there. I like Casey's new, um, new celebration. Oh, did the, the skip kind of the, oh, that. 
Yeah. Well, he, he's kind of been doing that. Yeah, I know. But like he, he it's now patented. I mean, it's yeah. he does it every time now. Yeah. Who was so what is what is a better celebration blowing kisses? Because both Shireman and Tominaga are showmen. They, they are. know that people pay to come kind of watch them put on a show. Uh, so you got Shireman blowing kisses, home and away, by the way. And then you've got Kese who covers his face or puts his hands on his head. Mm. If you were an opposing fan, which one would get you which agitated one would more? You more? Uh, Kese the after kiss. a bucket or Baylor? Yeah, Shireman's. Are you sure? I think it's the kiss. I don't know. Kese taking his time and doing the... Doing the head on the well, when he did on the head I, thing, the funnier thing was like, okay, so it wasn't that amazing, you know. When he did the oh, it was one of the reverse layups, and he kind of did like a skip where he just started kind of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, He's awesome. What is that? I, what are you doing? I mean, he, I think he did it his first year and it didn't last very long. The skip, he didn't know he did the airplane. Oh, okay, and so he hasn't <laughs> done that since. <laughs> And I thought there's a couple of times he where he'll make a driving plane. bucket and he's running. So while he's running back up the floor, I thought there's going to be times where he's going to do the airplane. Well, he, <laughs> he started the ice in the veins thing, too. And then yeah. it's now extended to Juan Gary. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we maybe need to move on to something different. No more ice. Well, we, we moved on from three goggles. Yeah, three goggles. That. Yeah. Yeah, th Nobody I'm happy. does three goggles anymore. I feel like you need to let that go another year. and Then you can bring three goggles back. It'd be cool. I mean, guys okay. in college yeah. baseball Retro. are getting kicked out for bat flips. And we're letting guys yeah. shoot themselves Shoot up themselves, on the floor yeah, yeah. hey it's not a like, it's not a drug uh, reference that is an interesting double standard you're especially right. when it's like say no to drugs day at the game i mean you it's got not a drugs there, you got guys out there hitting three the next thing you know they're going to be wrapping Gary, their arm. no it's not a drug <laughs> then they'll put in the no. they, bite, they get out like a spoon or something <laughs> no it's no it's not a drug <laughs> reference as you make a three, you hold your arm up and you start snipping <laughs> and then well, we have been doing the and then the next read you have to go is Kids, remember, coming up at halftime, <laughs> if you'd like to say no to, it's no to drugs, please come on to the floor in an orderly manner. I say if they would have had some foresight, they could have sold Baylor Shireman will blow you a kiss. Oh. You know, you you oh. you enter into this pool of Did money. Did they not do it for Valentine's Day? Baylor will blow you a kiss yeah, after he makes a, a three-pointer. Blows, blows your section a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of putting the lighter oh, in the, you in the specifically. spoon. The lighter in the spoon. <laughs> He's going, oh, my God. I mean, let's 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 lean into this thing, this guy, <laughs> and then you can do the the, oh, yeah. the chili thing because you're so cold because you don't have any meat on your bones because you're drug thin. Now I'm thinking of the Chappelle the Chappelle skit. Alex said Bryce Williams did three goggles last night. I didn't notice really? Bryce did three goggles. See, last that's night. not cool. No, you gotta wait. You gotta let that. That's okay. Rest he's an, for another he's year. An old soul living in that body. Yeah. Uh, a fully Hust writes in on Twitter. I prefer the CJ Wilcher cojones. Yes, that was great. He did you that. You got no marbles. I think. But he did that against Wisconsin. That was I good. think we need more because uh, Pacheco Reffin last night did it. Uh, <laughs> we need more raise the roof. We need to bring that back. How come we don't raise the roof much? What's Jeff Anderson doing? Well, he was playing to the crowd. He was, he was really high in it. <laughs> Shock. They won't allow him in downtown Omaha, but he comes and works a game in Lincoln. <laughs> He's like, these are my people. <laughs> I need to get him going. It's, I've never, I have never seen anything like that. I mean, re refs, they, you know, they do a good job. They keep it very, very cool, calm and collected, but everybody knows about Jeff Anderson and his high knees. And it's because of that, that he's going to go ahead and egg on the crowd. Come on, guys. Hey, getting back to Here the, the, the no, shot. But see, I th no, no, I think, it, I think how <laughs> officials can endure themselves to us now is, uh, you Grow saw beards. The, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Grow beards. Um, you, did you see the clip of the NHL official last week? You're not going to like, like this, this. call. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I think yeah. they should, you know, <laughs> when when some of these leagues in college basketball that have brought in the NBA where they have the, the camera and the officials have to talk into it, and they don't know where to, like college basketball guys are like right up on it, is they, they need to say, you're not going to like this, but the call on the floor has been overturned. <laughs> Yeah. And just lean it into like, it. Uh, here we go. Yep. Okay. I know you already hate me and you're going to boo me. But I'm going to, I'm going to say go. something right now, yeah. Yeah. but, but he also, I'm sorry. I don't have good news. Um, I, last night was the first time that I've seen an official raise the roof going off the floor and then also stop the game to have a conversation with people that are sitting courtside. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is he part doing of, any tournament games? This part year? of the show, man. I wonder if he's doing any tournament it's games. Part of the show. Hey, the Shireman thing, by the way, it does. Have we seen any opposition hit a three and blow a kiss? 
Because oh. because remember Illinois, we saw you gotta think their, that's coming. Remember Illinois, all their players were doing the Kase yeah. uh, celebration. I don't know if we've seen anybody respond with Baylor mm-hmm. Shireman's kiss. It's true. He blew a kiss. He blew a kiss to Draymond Green. Maybe Draymond Green will do one in his game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Draymond Green needs uh, to worry about not losing by fifty. Mm-hmm. Fifty-two. A friend of mine just sent that to me when uh, he blew the kiss. He turned to his. His, they were sitting courtside. Yeah, and his fifth grade daughter and Baylor said that's going. Oh, in. okay. Mm-hmm. As he turned and he, blew, he well, awesome. he said after the game because it was it was asked of him like, hey, so what'd you what'd you say there? Because you were saying something when he did that one, and he said, I don't even need to look. That's yeah. <laughs> just, I don't, I don't even need to look. I don't even need to look. That's that's he, just. My hey, guy has that is, is the he ultimate is a that showman. Is, that is the <laughs> ultimate. That is he, the ultimate crap talking without saying one bad word. I don't even need to look. Yep. Love it. It's going in. I know it's going to go in. Now, what if it doesn't go in? Ah, there was no chance that that was going to happen. Yeah. Now, if Creighton is not at the Final Four, I would like to see Shireman in some of the skills competition that Thursday night before oh, the yeah. Final Four. Like, I think he'd be perfect for those events. Oh, yeah. Because he'd play into it. Mm-hmm. And also, he's got a lethal you know, shot from deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get the people going. That's for sure. I'm gonna, we're going to miss Shireman and Tominaga. Because they like, they're, they're true guys that... You pay to go watch, mm-hmm. and you know, and they know that they got to put on a show. Like Caitlin Clark, whether you like her or not, she always delivers. Or she, maybe she's throat punching somebody, but she always <laughs> delivers. She's going to put on a show for you. Like Shireman, Shireman, Thank even I come to watch Caitlin Clark throat punch somebody. That's why I go to the game. I come to watch her chuck it from nearly half court uh, for no hey, reason. But you know what? It's just like it's just like Taylor Swift. I'm she's the Taylor Swift of college women's basketball. You pay money mm-hmm. to go see whether you like her or not. And you're going to expect to get a show. Mm-hmm. All and you get a show from 22 playing over in Iowa City. Yep. Just like you do from 55 and uh, 30. 30. 30. I mean, I'd pay money to go watch Caitlin Clark throat punch somebody. <laughs> I would have been super happy if I bought, you yeah, know, if I, I spent 500 I bucks on that ticket. It's like, hell yeah. Like, <laughs> she did yeah. it. She did it. And she flopped. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> but did you see, though, Connor in an angle as she was going by? <laughs> Um, can we talk about one aspect of the game on Fox yesterday? We all love when Al Michaels subtly gives out, oh, you know, that's not a good touchdown here. Oh, uh, yeah. There was are, a monologue. Are we comfortable with Gus Johnson leaning all into just ripping off player props? <laughs> it was a bit much. Uh, <laughs> and it was like at a weird time. Yeah. Is like that's is that the new thing? <laughs> like, are yeah. we gonna have our announcers that are doing the props and because hey by the way go pick up go wa- go hop on, going Fox on a bet. free throw was he, plus two it like, it like all of a sudden he had a hustle to get it in and it was so awkward and bizarre and after you heard it you were like stunned and he just kept moving on with the broadcast he must have had a deal he must have well, some type I, of deal. I would imagine that fox because fox bet is a yep. thing mm-hmm. right i would yep. imagine that but they got that in there. okay and, and and we all know lines and gambling and they're up on the screen but are we ready for our announcers to really go all in, not the Al, not the Al Michaels. Yeah. Hey, you know that's important for some people out there. Yeah. But the fact that he is doing player props on Caitlin Clark, I, I was think, like, whoa. I think, and maybe there will be a time where this sounds crazy, but I, I think player props during the game is probably a little over the line. <laughs> I agree. You I, do, I, don't think, you, I don't think I'm I'm ready or used to that. You can make reference to like, hey, they were favorites or they were yeah. underdogs and and whatever, or they were plus eight fifty to win the whatever. Like, sure. Or yeah. pre but, pregame, <laughs> you yeah. want to do, hey, yeah. Caitlin Clark, twenty and a half yes. points or whatever. Like, I, I, okay, I feel like the pregame part of it is where you usually do get a lot of the the player props. Like even outside of an Iowa women, do you do you think that Gus did that on his own? No, I don't. No, I don't. No, no. I only say that because it wasn't followed by like a graphic of Fox Sports bet or where you could go to get these props. Yeah, well, maybe he did that. I don't maybe, know. Maybe Gus went off script. <laughs> it was supposed to be done earlier. But like, Gus, was, you didn't get that in. But it oh, was oh, so bizarre bad. where it happened. You, you and look make at, good here. And look, yeah, at, we, it was a make good. We've embraced either for the good or the bad gambling. Remember when ESPN and college football, they went all in on gambling and it was a Thursday night game where they introduced the lines on the screen mm. and they were doing it in real time mm-hmm. of, Oh, the odds have changed yeah. here and collectively college football lost their mind and it lasted what another day. And before the first big Saturday of college football, it was gone. So weird. Yep. So weird. That makes sense. Why it was gone. We weren't ready for that much. Now it's been, 
it's been we've been eased into it and it's in our common you know talk so also why not yesterday they didn't begin the game like they did in lincoln with how many points she needs on the screen like i don't think they started putting that up until she got to like 10 10 or 12 that was I guess like, I when that. they played when i really when Iowa played in that. nebraska yeah. it was up off a uh, tip off yeah. Which, and in the game um, on Peacock, uh, gosh, who the hell did they even play that night when she broke Michigan, the uh, she, women's she Michigan? Yeah, many games it, it was, on Peacock. It, as soon as the score graphic appeared, so did that graphic on that on that Peacock game. Yeah, I, I was totally fine with them taking that one off the corner. And of all yeah. the ways to, I know, free throw hit that number, free throws after she flopped. Yeah. Oh, it was that was a terrible tech. It was awful. And then she throat punched her later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She also got caught. Uh, I don't know if it was on TV, but it was a fan caught. Um, she turned to one of the officials and said, call that yeah. SH. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. She gets after it for sure. Potty man. Hey, I, I, I said this to Nick earlier. Your role model. Is she the most likable and unlikable person? Yeah, she's polarizing. At the same, same time. time. Yep. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. she's incredibly polarizing. Yep. That's a, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. You can put that on your tombstone. Yeah, I don't know if it's so fun for her probably to deal with all the time, but it's good for the game. That's for sure. <laughs> it's good for the game. You it's, mean you mean when you pull up outside of Carver Hockey at seven in the morning, there's a camera right there as you get out and you look like you just woke up? Yeah, probably not real not fun good? for her. No, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> don't see that going away though anytime soon. Nope. Uh Brian uh tweets in. Hi, Brian. Says Baylor Shireman could compete in the missed dunk contest for oh. sure. Now that was uh he wasn't sure if he was gonna dunk it or lay it up, and then he kind of got caught in between and then just biffed it. You know, it happens. Yeah, it does happen. He came back later and laid it up, and it worked out. <laughs> it worked out for him. This he's been trying to put people on posters all year long, though. He's, the, he's been trying to kill people. And it makes me think of our poor guy Rink Mast. Man, so many people don't think he can dunk. Well, can he? I mean, I, I, I feel like I've seen him do one. <laughs> okay, good. Maybe, tw- maybe two. I was wondering if like, we would get a Kese dunk last night. Oh, ooh. On senior night. Oh, can you imagine what he would have done after that? I just that? think that's probably failure written all over it. Well, I mean, I'd like to see him try. I mean, you've seen some of the ooh. shots he's put up at times. <laughs> Might as well just go for it. You know what? I think I think, I think, think Rink and Kese are good teammates because they defer to Juwan. They're like, you take our dunks. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you do what you want to do. We don't need to dunk the basketball. He's trying to dunk on people all the time too. We got we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of people on our on our local basketball teams who are just trying to put people on on posters. And I I am very surprised sometimes when somebody will dunk a basketball and you go, oh, I didn't know. Um, I didn't know Frankie Fiddler could dunk a basketball. Really? Yeah, really? and all of a sudden this year he's dunking a lot more. He's dunking on oh. people. Well, there's also, I think. I just, you know, assumed, not, not I just playing, assumed he could. Not playing the game above uh, St. Pius the 10th, 8th grade basketball. <laughs> um, I just think if a guy has a chance to dunk a basketball, he should. Yes. Instead of trying to lay it in or try and take the foul, why don't you try and just dunk it on somebody? Use oh, yeah. Dunk, dunk it on their head. while you have it. Yeah, well, dunk, so. Dunkin's cool. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you miss the dunk or you could have made the layup. I'm pretty confident I can't dunk right now. Take the but layup. There's always the phrase, take the no, layup. But you know, you watch enough basketball now. Here's the new thing that just drives me nuts is a guy will beat his man off the dribble and he'll have an uncontested layup. What do we do? We kick it out for a three. Mm-hmm. Yep. Three is more than two, Gary. Pass up a yep. good shot to get a great That's shot. That's right. Mm-hmm. Pass drives up a high percentage shot to take no, a lower no, percentage no, shot, but it looks good. I may have seen that basketball. in a game I called last week mm-hmm. where a guy has an uncontested layup. Boom. All you got to do, a little finger roll off the window and said, let's kick it to the corner for a three. And I'm like, uh... Okay. They had that. that I mean, so it Kyrie, Kyrie a couple Ward. times in the Kyrie, Kyrie Ward, come on. Like the one where uh, they had to chase it down. The Marquette had to chase it down in the backcourt and Trey beat them to it. Like it's yeah. one on one. Trey could get to the bucket and get a foul. Ah, I'm going to shoot a three. Yeah. Made it. Blew the roof Clark off the effect. place. Yeah. Single handedly killing. Single handedly killing the uh, slam dunk competition. <laughs> sad. Very very sad. Uh, Baylor Sherman, by the way, Big East Player of the Week mm, just announced. Might be of the year. Yeah, I think he's got a pretty good argument yeah. for it. Stuff One guy on. is the best player on the best team. The other guy has the best stats. Mm-hmm. So it'll come down to what you choose. But I think you have to put him in. We're talking all American category now, too. It's getting close. Now, let me, let me ask you this about the the Big East postseason awards. Is Hurley, and I, I'm kind of leading you into this question. Is Hurley the Big East coach of the year? 
I don't know why he would be. I just, I just so but I don't generally but, like giving it to the team who's the far and away now, favorite. He did lose like five to six key ingredients, and yeah. they're a better team this year. They were they were but, not picked first, were they? I, I think they were. I think I they were picked was Marquette second. the favorite. Marquette I can't was, imagine yeah. UConn would have okay. been picked. Uh, no, Marquette, Marquette was picked to yeah. win it. But he lost basically six really good guys off last year's team. Um, but if you don't win the coach of the year, yeah, in Marquette your own was conference, first. Creighton was second. Can you win the national coach of the year? Because I'm seeing that from Doster and Goodman today. They're like national coach of the year, TJ Otzelberger or Dan Hurley or Lamont Paris from South Carolina. Really? And I'm like, if you don't win the coach of the year in your own conference, can you win national coach of the year? I don't think you should be able to know. Right. But if do we have any historical but context if he, for this? If he is not the coach of the year, who would be then the coach mm. of the year? Kyle Neptune? No. God Shaheen no. Holloway? <laughs> you could make a case for Kim him. English? You could maybe make a case. He lost one of his key players and yeah. they're still knocking they're on the there. door of the yeah. NCAA tournament. I would say, yeah. From the definition of like what you have coming back and kind of the unknown, Ed I would Cooley. say Holloway or <laughs> one or two years ago. <laughs> I, hey, I would say English hey, or Holloway. I thought yesterday was going to be a big day. Georgetown was, they almost picked up another victory over the weekend. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Josh has well, already he, gotten the bank. Yeah. He's he's already just fine. Georgetown. Got my two. Now it's down. Yeah, it's all gravy. Um, all right. I'm not, I'm not greedy. Hey, uh, poll question here off a little pop culture on the weekend. Is Sydney Sweeney a generational talent? <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a fine talent. <laughs> wow. You know what? I I did watch that, and yeah, you did. <laughs> she, the day that we tried, I, she was not bad. I, she was not bad. She was okay. She was good. I thought I thought they did a good job of writing sketches. I thought her me. monologue was what was horrible. See, I think the monologue would be very difficult, very Unless hard. You're like Dave Chappelle, yeah. Like even the week before with Gillis, it was okay. Yeah, but it's live and. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought they wrote some really good sketches for her. Like the Air Bud was really, really good. Yeah, it's that pretty was funny. funny the Hooters thing was funny. Um, quick note to people who cover entertainment. You can stop writing about the Shane Gillis episode of SNL. It didn't matter as much as you want it to. Well, this is like stop I said, writing Josh, think pieces about it, it. It's been a big two weeks for dudes my age who <laughs> Shane Gillis and Sydney Sweeney. Like SNL's never been bigger for dudes my age. God, every single day white dudes my age i think piece say. about shane gillis hosting snl shane gillis literally SNL. nobody cares <laughs> it's been I, a long I time she since was, i watched snl she was fine though i she was fine oh, i thought fine. i thought they wrote some <laughs> yeah, good oh, yeah. sketches i thought there it was funny i was wondering how many how many sketches they were going to do with the premise of it being her boobs um and it was all of them <laughs> yes so you know i thought they could well, have maybe cut that's off that's probably the right choice <laughs> i mean i mean if you have a money maker why go against it <laughs> and then her, she so snl is like the place to go to let everybody know what's going on you know you get travis and taylor uh and then you saw who made a guest appearance her rumored boyfriend yeah showed up glenn i never heard of this guy until this whole thing popped up yeah <laughs> Glenn, Glenn Powell. You know, Glenn, Glenn Powell. Glenn Powell. Did you not watch Top Gun? I do not. not. He did not. I did not. He did not see Maverick. How have we not seen that? After after talking about for months, I think I'm going to watch Maverick. I think I'm going to watch it. Yeah, I I, I haven't seen a movie in a while. Just period. A a single movie. This year's version of Top Gun Maverick for Connor is on Glenn Powell and Hidden (laughs) Figures, too. No, I didn't see that. I believe he was. Yeah, yeah, I think he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he played. Uh, yeah, he's uh, John Glenn. Well, wasn't that John Glenn. Wasn't that a rumor that they were John dating? Glenn. Yeah, and he showed up in one of the last sketches. He showed up in the monologue. He and then he and then he was there at the end when everybody said goodbye too. I don't. Was he in a sketch? He, he, I, I thought he was in. A I sketch. turned it off prior to the second Casey Musgraves performance. Was he just hanging? She out? was just whispering the whole time. <laughs> Who is this Casey Musgraves? Who is this person? <laughs> She's not very good. There's my take. Sorry. Yeah. You at least watched what? Movie? Yeah, I have no idea. What, Josh? What? I How watched... are you so old? I watched her first thing. I was like, what is this? I know nothing about current music, and I know who she is. I just, she's a country singer, right? Yeah. Apparently. Okay, right. She's doing, yeah, and she's now starting to cross over. And the know. men who oh, run okay. country radio won't play her songs because she's one of them women. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> really true. They play Lainey that's Wilson. What, that's what she said when oh. she won a whole bunch of Grammys. Oh. She's like, this goes out to all the. She won a bunch of Grammys for what? I don't know. She's not a Grammys for whispering, Connor. For whispering. 
She said, it's for all the country PDs who wouldn't play my music because I was a woman. Wow. Mason Daniel, who is of music, says oh, she's really good. Yikes. <laughs> hey, man, maybe we just have different tastes. She's really oh, I'm not saying you need to like her or not like her, but like even I know who she is. She's she's blown up in the last. I've definitely years. heard the name, but I never really seen her do anything. You don't until uh, you don't get up on the Saturday mornings from eight to eleven and watch uh, the top twenty countdown on country music television. I do not, but I used to. Did you? I, you? I, okay. Yeah, I used to. Yeah, I, yeah. I bet I, I, I bet I, I bet I watch a piece of it every week. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm busy. I, I'm, I mean, I'm an old, I'm an old soul that like still likes some music videos. I do like. I, I miss music videos. So, I miss MTV the way it was. How does Sydney Sweeney's fiance feel about all this? Probably pretty bad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that her fame is taken off. No, that everybody says that she's dating that one guy. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I mean, where's he in all this? Apparently, backstage. <laughs> <laughs> not on camera for everyone to see. I mean, I think she was like, I'm happy to report that we're, we're very happily together and I love him. And then here's Glenn Powell in the, uh, in the audience. I think rules are out the window. Okay. Isn't that like when, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, with the, remember the hit, he and why am I blanking on what's his face? His name with Lady Gaga, the Bradley Cooper, Bradley Cooper. Remember what he was? Yeah. He had a girlfriend. They were both in a relationship. They both left their relationship yeah. and, and America went, this is it. Yep, it's Those happening. two are going to, we were going to will them into a relationship yeah. and it never happened. And, and didn't like, how do we know? Didn't the, the, uh, I guess, I guess the, true. the fake or not even fake, but the, the movie relationship that Lady Gaga and he had is like what allegedly their broke chemistry up was undeniable. Watch their performance at the Oscars and tell me that's two people who aren't in love with each other. Oh, they gaze into each other's yeah. eyes. They sing so passionately they're to one actors. another. No, well, they're great actors. They were feeling it. They're actors. They were feeling it. They can act. Mm. I haven't seen that movie either. There's there's more, more to that. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the movie. I saw them sing together, and that was enough. I heard yeah. the song though. Yeah, I song never was good. I didn't see the end of it. Oh. Watch it. Watch it on a plane. Kind of important. I, that's what I heard. <laughs> uh, watched it on a plane, then we landed, and so I couldn't see the end of it. Mm. Uh, back to celebrations. We got a comment <laughs> here from uh, Dave earlier. I the ice in the vein celebration is dumb, but it's still better than I'm eating some soup. Oh yeah, <laughs> feed me. Let him eat. Feed me. I don't know. I kind of like the soup one. Was that uh, Dante Culpepper? No, no, it was uh, Cam Newton, wasn't it? The first to do that. Oh, I what, thought it was Zeke. It? I thought Zeke. Yeah, I, I that's why. That's why credit. Is that's right, yeah. Zeke. I Zeke know. was I always, the first. I always to do think it. Zeke Elliott. Feed me the ball. Uh, what's better, ice in the veins or the sniff first down? I love the sniff, the sniff first, first down. down is uh, <laughs> it's, it's the throat slashing was short lived. Yeah. yeah, as it should be. Bill Callahan. Mm. Um, what about shooting arrows? Oh, yeah. Oh, Why good. doesn't Tomonaga do that? Yeah. Because, I, I, like, I make a three and then stop in the middle of the <laughs> He's floor. He's trying to become and, his own man. He's and trying shoot, to and, shoot an arrow. He's not Jamal Murray. He could have just, <laughs> he, he wants to do his own thing, and it turned out to be this. <laughs> he turned himself into a meme. Just wanted them to do it on the face so it would be like Kevin from that's Home the, Alone. That's the other thing. <laughs> you have to you have to understand that it's going to become a meme afterwards, too. So you have to. And people are going to make fun of you. Yeah. And the other yeah. team's going to throw it back in your face, which Illinois did. Let's, uh, uh, it, you know what? That's a good uh, lesson here. Let's uh, let's see how many Tomonaga memes are out there. Oh, so many. Have you ever seen the replies to the losing <laughs> tweets for the other team? <laughs> that, is, that is a fun thing to do right after. Yeah. Just look through. Uh, bullet point Bob emails in Hi, BPB. you guys actually watch SNL. That's like subscribing to the SWAC football season pass on ESPN. Oh, I don't know about that. Hey, hey, that's, hey, that's hey, actually hey. a good joke. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm out so, on making fun of SNL, but that's a pretty good joke. So on, the Ocho. on my, uh, who doesn't love on my, football? uh, recording. I don't know if it's still called a DVR. Or whatever. It is called a DVR. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Saturday Night Live is recorded every week because I watch the news. Oh, Weekend uh, Update is great. Yeah, weekend okay. Update is by far yeah. consistently the best thing. Yes. They had it again this week, and it was uh, Stingray. Well, they, they had a Stingray on there, which was they funny. They had fun with Mitch McConnell. They had a lot of fun with Mitch McConnell. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but the best one is when they write each other's jokes right before Christmas. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And of course. it's super uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of references to that. Is it, isn't the Mitch McConnell just the facial expressions? 
Well, <laughs> it's usually just like they'll show his face and then they'll they just it. kept bringing up the picture of Mitch McConnell <laughs> where he yes. doesn't really look alive. Yeah. You know, yeah. When did, when did officially happy. people were out on SNL? It's it's generational, right? It happens to um, everyone. Yeah. Um, it's for me. It's it kind of comes in waves. It depends on like who the, like the main cast is. It's not even yeah. necessarily who's hosting. It's just am, am I feeling this group? But like am the I show, not? The show now is just based off of bits from the internet. Basically, it's just an inner like yeah. if you if you don't if you're not on the internet and you don't know what people are saying, you wouldn't get seventy five percent of SNL right now. Mm. But that's just it generationally happens every single way. So you mean way. when Shane Gillis was doing an HR skit last week on SNL, you would had a you wouldn't have gotten you probably it. wouldn't have gotten. Did it. you see yeah. that one, Josh? No. <laughs> he didn't care about Shane Gillis at all. Was the bit that he probably got called into an HR office at one point and said, Hey, you don't work here anymore. No, well, that it was happen. uh he oh. goes, Ken, uh, so you're telling me that I we I can't date uh coworkers and like, yeah. Well, what if I ask them out and they don't no, you can't. He's like, well, what if I ask somebody else out um, like one time and they say, no, can I go back to the one I really want to go out with? Yeah. And they're like, no, <laughs> it was, it was riveting. It's like the clock restarts after a year or it, yes. it, like it, it takes a okay. year and then you could ask the person out yeah. again. Okay. Otherwise, if you, if you don't wait a year, it's harassment. Oh. So he would just goes okay. down the line and ask yeah. everybody out, you know? Okay. Edgy. It was. <laughs> Some people like, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, like I'm with you on last week. It wasn't what it was made out to, to be like he was going to revenge on mm -hmm. SNL and he was going to be able to basically do two hours of his stand up. No, not going to happen. I think Lauren me. got in the way. Yeah. But I just don't yeah. think that was, that's how the show is. You know, it's, you got to put the guy in the places. It's not this so. big referendum on cancel culture or people getting oh, canceled. Yeah, we're doing that too. It can just it can just be a guy got a gig. Okay. <laughs> well, remember, I, I think one of the last times ah. that I had watched SNL was when Morgan Wallen was on, uh -oh. and then it was a week later when that happened. And then they, he was oh. part of their weekend update. <laughs> 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 that was that was a first. It hadn't happened in a while. All right, dudes. Yeah. Life hits you pretty quick. <laughs> Does we'll I always keep... have SNL to either make fun of or enjoy. <laughs> yep, they're always and Caitlin Clark. <laughs> and they, uh, yeah, they've done a skit uh, around her. They did a Caitlin Clark skit. Yeah, that rings a bell. Was she on Weekend Update? Was she like uh, did someone play her as a as a guest? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't hmm. seen it. I don't know. I thought there was a reference uh, that she made of laughing at something was oh. brought up on SNL. About okay. It. Hmm. Okay. Gosh. All right. You're big time. Enjoy your afternoons, gentlemen. See you. That is the crossover powered by Everlevel Concrete Repair in Omaha at everlevelconcrete.com. It's Monday. We'll start things off next. That's the crossover. The Connor Happer Show is next on 1620 The Zone. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. And I thought the quote from Ted Carter when he was asked the controversies that have followed Ross Bjork. Carter said, a calm sea never produced a good sailor. That made me laugh, too. <laughs> to which I would say, Thank you, it makes a big difference, though, when the guy you hired is the one throwing the bombs in the ocean <laughs> to make rough seas. Unsportsmanlike conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Mostly cloudy Monday, breezy and mild with a high today in Omaha, 57 degrees and north northeasterly wind gusts possible up to 25 miles an hour. A few more peaks of sunshine possible this afternoon, becoming mostly clear tonight. Cool with a low of 31, still a bit breezy at times with northerly wind gusts up to 15 miles an hour. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. Blowout sale at Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. And don't forget, the uh, coffee's always on. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The Source. By your mom's house. Spring is in sight. Looking to wake up your yard this season? Make your neighbors green with envy with Lanahaw's wide selection of landscape supplies and homegrown plant material. Get a head start today. Lanahaw Nurseries, 192nd and Center. The Ancient Order of Hibernians annual St. Patrick's Day celebration is Saturday, March 9th, with the parade through the Omaha's Old Market beginning at 11 a.m. 
Immediately following the parade, don't miss the fabulous party at Annie's Irish Pub, 11th and Capitol. Delicious food, libations, Irish dancers, and music. Parking is available at 10th and Jackson and 15th and Douglas, courtesy of Park Omaha. Sponsored in part by Molino Fireworks, Spirit Catholic Radio 102.7, and Nebraska Democratic Party. If weekend brunch makes you happy, and Sunday happy hour makes you happy, and delicious Mexican foods make you happy, then come to Copal Mexican Cuisine this weekend and get happy, happy, happy. It starts with brunch on Saturday and Sunday that includes Mexican favorites and brunch classics with something for everyone. Then it's Sunday fun day happy hour with happy hour prices all day. So come on, get happy at Copal Mexican Cuisine. Find them on Facebook and at 129th and Maple. Traditional Mexican flavors with a modern culinary touch. Meet Cheryl. Hey. She's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. It's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and But uh. she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, N.A. member FDIC. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. If you're having problems in the bedroom, talking about it is the last thing you want to do. Same goes for hair loss, anxiety, or even depression. That's where Hims comes in. Through Hims, you don't have to talk about it. You can do something about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start where you can find a variety of potential solutions for the problems men face every day and save up to 95% on generic alternatives. The entire process is 100% online, making it incredibly simple, straightforward, and above all, private. If prescribed, treatments made using clinically proven ingredients are shipped directly to your door in low-key packaging. So if you're experiencing ED, hair loss, anxiety, or problems with your general health, you don't have to go to the doctor or the pharmacy or spend all day talking about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start and do something about it. Get started today at hymns.com slash start. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash S-T-A-R-T. It's the Connor Happer Show. Are we sure we want to do this? Uh, could you, like, make an announcement that we're ready? It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. All right, welcome in. Happy Monday. It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. Connor Happer and Josh Odson with you. Back from a weekend of hoops. Both of our local teams, as we talked about last week, are definitely going to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you can stop doing the, okay, I think one more ice is it. No, that, they're in. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I don't think a, a loss at Michigan would be too damaging to Nebraska basketball. Um, I'm already planning on Creighton losing to Villanova on, on Saturday. I think that, that's already done in my mind. You've said it. You've had yeah. it. You've... <laughs> I, don't think it, I don't think it matters all that much. Although, um, there is an ongoing storyline in the Big East, and we, we watched the beginning of it um, mm-hmm. over the weekend where Tyler Kolick, is going to uh, miss the rest of the regular season. They have two games left. Shelving them, Marquette. I would have. I think that's a good call. That's why I thought there was pretty much no chance he was going to play on Saturday. But I, I'm, you know, I don't think there's a guarantee that he's going to be completely there for whether it's MSG or the NCAA tournament. I, I think that oblique thing, depending on the severity of it, could last some time. So that's that's definitely one thing to watch. Um, for Marquette, who could either be the two or the three in the Big East, Creighton, either the two or three in the Big East as well, depending on how the final week shakes out. Nebraska has uh, a chance to finish anywhere from three to five in the Big Ten Conference for a team that was picked to finish 12th. Fred Hoiberg definitely has a strong case for the Big Ten Coach of the Year this year, but they'll probably just give it to Chris Collins because they don't know how to do anything else <laughs> or something like that. They, they briefly, Kevin and Sean briefly like mentioned it last night and Sean Morris is like, yeah, he's definitely got a case. Like you could tell the brains were, uh, the, the gears were turning a little bit. You're like, <laughs> wait a minute. He should be big 10 coach of the year, but he hadn't, he didn't believe it himself yet. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think there's definitely a case for Fred if he does or doesn't get it, doesn't take away their accomplishment from this year, um, including bringing Kevin McHale to Pinnacle Bank Arena. Accomplishment of the year for Nebraska basketball. Sure. That was sweet. I saw the video. 
um, from one of the reporters at 10 11 coming, they were coming off the floor at the end of the game. And it was one of the, it was one of the recruits who was standing there and Fred was walking off with Kevin McHale. <laughs> and Fred was just like, here, meet Kevin McHale. Like the cool, like the coolest thing you could possibly do. He's like, here, here's Kevin McHale. Like, I know, you, I know you want to meet him. <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing. Maybe, maybe you guys don't know who Kevin McHale is. Hmm. Sad. He had, in their in their post game when they brought up Kevin McHale to talk, um, Fred had to be like, "Hey, Charles Barkley thinks it's the greatest NBA player of all time," and they were probably like, "Whoa, whoa, huh? r- really?" Ah, Charles, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope that kids know about Kevin McHale. Kids these days. All right. Um. So we'll recap all the basketball from over the weekend and all the Caitlin Clark and all the, uh, all the baseball as well. Um, and also the things that we are overreacting to from over the weekend. There's quite a few. There are a few things. Uh, the Big Ten Football Conference just announced that their media day will now be three days long. Three days long. Connor, and it's still in Indianapolis. Still in Indianapolis, which many people love. Great city, Not great Not accommodating town. those West Coast schools. There will now be four possible days in which you could go to St. Elmo's that should like, you know, straighten things out a little bit. How much old trapper beef jerky can you fit in your bag? Never enough, Josh. I, that that thing supplied my golf bag all summer long. Over the course of three days. All summer and into the fall. Uh, which is really nice. Nebraska goes Wednesday, July twenty fourth, right in the middle. Right in the middle. With Iowa, UCLA, USC. Oh. Folks, don't we love Big Ten Media Days? Hey, it's coming up right around the corner. Wonder where Nebraska will be picked in their new 70 team conference. Who knows? Can't wait for you to get a bump in to Lincoln Riley and be like, hey, Lincoln, you want to come on the show? (laughs) He'd be like, yes, I love talking to media. Oh, good question. Which of the new coaches in the conference will be most likely to appear on any of our shows? It's like, it's. It's Dan, or is it the exact opposite way I'm thinking? No, I think I think UCLA. No, no, it's it's not the most pop. Like Dan's gonna be too busy. Yeah. Lincoln's gonna be too busy. So I think it's probably Deshaun Foster. He might appear. At the Bruins head coach? Yeah. Yeah, okay. He he might he might appear on the show. Not Tony White. Famously. Famously not Tony White. Or the or Jed Fish. Jed Fish. Jed Jed Fish could you know he, he could wear stand his visor. The room. Yeah. He could show up a little bit to make the rounds on media row. Um, by the way, did you see the uh, Big Ten the Big Ten basketball standings updated as of as of last night and as of this morning? I guess. Uh, no, I guess I didn't. So if you look at the league, you will notice that the uh, the top teams go as such. Purdue, Illinois, Northwestern, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa, and then Minnesota and Michigan State are tied for that seventh spot. So let's just say it's let's just give the tiebreaker advantage to Minnesota for the bit here. You know what all those teams have in common? All those seven? Uh lost to Nebraska. They all hail from the Big Ten West. Oh long that's... live the Big Ten West. <laughs> Dominant. We run the basketball conference. Purdue, Illinois, Northwestern, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota. Those are the top seven teams in the Big Ten. And then the other seven are all from the East. Michigan State, Indiana, Ohio State, Penn State, Rutgers, Maryland, and Michigan. How about that? How about that, Josh? Long live our beautiful, beautiful divisions. Love it. Um, And as a last last token of our appreciation, they're going to be the top seven teams in the league this year um all right today coming up on the show sam mckinnon will join us at one o'clock we'll talk about the hoops um he wrote some football things as well i'll definitely ask him about things that he's written recently this week which is exciting and uh we will also so josh is a we know this josh is a very good producer i'm great producer and and sometimes you know by the way lots of kudos lots of pats on the back to uh josh from over the weekend many people ask me how'd you get frank kelly endo to show up for 20 minutes Uh, i just i just laid all the compliments on you josh close personal friend that's just my guy josh Mm -hmm. he somehow he knows how to build relationships with Mm -hmm. people he just does and so it's a people when frank kelly endo didn't need to come in (laughs) and josh had roped him into a private a previous prior agreement that he would come in during this week frank 
as a great man, as great of a man he is, he mm-hmm. could not go ahead and leave us hanging in that regard. So he didn't, and he made his way over here, and and we got some good feedback on that, which was fun. You guys should go back and listen to it. It's on YouTube, and it's on 1620thezone.com. But here's another reason that Josh is a good producer, because he knows he knows the things that I like, and he knows the things that I'm excited about. And so he gave me a segment today. It's your show. You should you should get. <laughs> he gave me one. Yeah. So Josh is on the Josh is on all the email list for all the books that are coming out. And there was one that caught Josh's eye. There's a Royals book. <laughs> there's a book. There's just a, a book about the Royals. It's got a bunch of cool pictures. I got a copy of the book. It's great. And so we're talking about the guy. We're talking to the guy who wrote the book, Matt Stewart, today. Um, and we're just going to talk about the Royals for. I, like I won't, you know, you know, I won't drag it out too long. I I call it 15 minutes, but get ready for that. We're we're gonna we're gonna go down memory lane for about 15 minutes. So here's what I'm, happens. I'm sorry. Here's what happens every time Connor goes on one of these rants about the Royals. It is generally followed up with one or two people, a smattering of comments like. Hey, I like when Connor talks about the Royals. People so, like when I'm when when we're passionate about things. We are uh, an affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. We're going to play many Kansas City Royals games. On you don't the, you don't have to excuse it for me. You don't have to excuse it away, Josh. Like, come on, t- tell people why we're doing this. I did one for my guy. <laughs> he works hard all weekend. He should have one segment where he doesn't have to think. Just get away from things. Just like ask him about James Shields. You know the. Lorenzo Cain, I'll see this Escobar trade. How great uh, can Cole Reagans be? How, yeah, Go. how good is Cole Reagans going to be? Um, yeah, we'll just we'll just flash back. Right. The book, the Kansas City Royals, an illustrated timeline. Uh, we'll have Matt on the show at the top of the hour. So that's coming up soon. That's the lineup powered by the referees at John Higgins Weather Guard. We would love you to get in touch with the show. 402-951-1620 on the 42 Degrees, the source hotline. You can text that number as well. Twitter at Happer Show at Connor Happer on the JTech Construction Zone Twitter feed. Email Connor or Josh O at 1620thezone.com on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. Speaking of the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox, I already got uh, an email from the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox from old man Doug, who is of Equitable Bank. Hi, old man Doug. He has three questions okay. in, in one email. Should Caitlin Clark's scoring record be compared to Pistol Pete's? Should Nebraska call it chasing four instead of chasing three? Don't we want to win, not tie? And is Frank Caliendo the best non-regular guest you've ever had? Oh, wow. I think he's, to be fair, I think he's better than probably our regular guests, too. <laughs> Sorry. You hear that Maybe regular shout guest? Shout out to like Robin and, you know, Sam McEwen. Going to get that Brian Christofferson <laughs> rant. <laughs> I know. It'll watch out for that. So, yes, you can email in on the Equitable Bank inbox. Uh, we say good morning to our YouTube watching audience, 1620 The Zone on 1620 The Zone TV on YouTube or easily findable at 1620thezone.com where Drunk Monk comments in. Producer Josh got that dog in him. Agreed. Many are saying. Agreed. Are saying. And John emails in. He says another reason Josh is a great producer is that he stopped murdering the app. Congratulations <laughs> to Josh on that one as well. I guess, hey, people are listening to the, the app. I won't kill it. The praise is flying in for one Josh Odson as of this morning. All right. Yeah, many, are, many are saying, who am I to deny them the thrill? We'll come back and start things off. A uh, lot to cover from over the weekend. The local basketball teams, uh, not me not caring about Brian Ferentz, oh, Caitlin Clark. Bit of a real conversation about Sloganeering, this. Sloganeering, things of that nature. Coming up on 1620 The Zone. Now live on Twitch, YouTube, and 1620TheZone.com. Hey, Joe Montana here. Back in my football days, I knew the importance of a strong defense. Now I'm sharing how you can help defend your health against pneumococcal pneumonia, a bacterial lung disease that can be life-threatening. If you're 65 or older or 19 or older with certain chronic conditions like diabetes or asthma, you're at increased risk. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about vaccination and learn more at nopneumonia.com. That's K-N-O-W pneumonia.com. Sponsored by Pfizer. Hey, Omaha dog lovers, get ready for more wags and more fun. Hound HQ, your dog's favorite spot for daycare, boarding, and top-notch grooming is now open. 
At Hound HQ, there's plenty of space for a pup to sleep, play, and everything in between. Plus, our expert groomers are here to ensure your furry family member always looks fabulous. Join our pack on Facebook and Instagram at The Hound HQ or visit our website, thehoundhq.com, and sign up your dog today. Hound HQ. More wags, more fun. Omaha fans, are you ready to score tickets to your favorite events? Hassle-free? Yes. Shop local and tickets for less. Located right here in Omaha at 145th and West Center Road. No hidden fees, just transparent pricing. And when you use the promo code the Zone at checkout, you'll save big at ticketsforless.com. Whether it's sports, concerts, or something else, Tickets for Less has you covered. If you have a question, call today, 402-398-1999. You'll never find better customer service because every seat holds a story. Find yours and use the promo code the Zone at checkout at ticketsforless.com. Howdy, Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time. Time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. If you're having problems in the bedroom, talking about it is the last thing you want to do. Same goes for hair loss, anxiety, or even depression. That's where Hims comes in. Through Hims, you don't have to talk about it. You can do something about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start where you can find a variety of potential solutions for the problems men face every day and save up to 95% on generic alternatives. The entire process is 100% online, making it incredibly simple, straightforward, and above all, private. If prescribed, treatments made using clinically proven ingredients are shipped directly to your door in low-key packaging. So if you're experiencing ED, hair loss, anxiety, or problems with your general health, you don't have to go to the doctor or the pharmacy or spend all day talking about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start and do something about it. Get started today at hymns.com slash start. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash S-T-A-R-T. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Joey Brackett's just put out his seed list for the morning. Oh, give it to me. All right, so Purdue's the number one overall. Debatable. UConn, Houston, Arizona. Okay. Then five, Tennessee, knocking on the door of a one seed. Six, North Carolina. Seven, Marquette. Eight, Iowa State. 9, Duke, 10, Baylor, 11, Creighton, 12, Kansas. Oh, Creighton, higher than Kansas. Kentucky, Illinois, Alabama, San Diego State, right now your top 16. Uh, So, yes, that means Creighton is a 30 at the moment in in the region of Arizona, Iowa State, Creighton, Illinois. Whoa, I like that for Creighton. I also like that. Wow. Just keep that right, (laughs) right there. Right there. Nobody move. Also one to watch this week. Villanova, one of the last four buys at this point. They, I believe, get Marquette and Creighton this week. Uh maybe I know they have another big game outside. No, it's Seton Hall and Creighton. Seton Hall on the road and Creighton at home. So if they get if they get one of those, they're probably in the NCAA tournament, which is amazing, sort of to think about. Seton Hall's right there in the bubble as well. Providence is right there on the bubble. Nebraska has not been in the bubble picture in weeks now. Yet people still talk about them as if it's not a done deal. They're they're done. They're they're in. Nebraska's going to be in the NCAA tournament, and the only thing to figure out is what seed and where you headed. I don't know. I think if they get one more, they're in. No, <laughs> they're in. You're an idiot. You always like to get one more, well, just generally. Yes, you want every single one you can get. <laughs> Uh, all right. So I let, saw me, in, let me just do the full bracketology. I saw on. intelligent people whose opinion others care about, not me, but 
say that well, one more, and I think I think it's a lock. Yeah, I think they're I think they're pretty much a lock. Idiots. Wait, you there, there's the feeling of safety and comfort, right? Like if you win on, um, if you win this weekend against Michigan, then you feel more comfortable. But you're also dealing with a very tricky situation. Because in an ideal world, Nebraska is either a 10 or a 7 and not an 8 or or a 9. Correct. Because if you were an 8 or a 9, yes, you're going to get matched up with somebody who is just as capable as any of the 7s or 10s in that first game. And then in the second game, if should you win it, you'll be matched up with one of the 1s. And we talked about it last week. The 1s, are I think there's just a clear difference between the 1s and the, the ones and the 2s or maybe like 3 of the 1s. And the twos at this moment. Um, currently in Joey Brackett's bracket, Nebraska is a nine in the same little pod. So they'd play Mississippi State in their first game, and then they'd get Houston in the second round. But maybe it's just about winning one game and you just forget about it. And I don't know. If you can get to wearing a white jersey or something like that, you want to do that. So Nebraska's probably, I, I don't know where they're going to be. A lot can fold, unfold here in the final week and in the Big Ten tournament, too. I, you're, you're anywhere from a 7 to a 10. I don't think you're going to jump two seed lines probably in a, in, a, in a week and a half here, two weeks, but you never know. Um, I'd say try and get that double buy, obviously, if you can. If not, it's not, the, it's not the worst thing in the world. Frankly, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for Nebraska to get an extra game at the Big Ten tournament to get another opportunity because you're going to be, you're, I mean, you're going to play somebody who's pretty good, even if you only get the single buy. Um, especially, and then it counts for a, a neutral court win. But you got to remember, like a lot of this stuff is already as as you head into that final week leading up to Selection Sunday, March the seventeenth. A lot of that stuff is already kind of sorted out before then. Not that you can't move. Not that you're you're probably not going to drop. You the only way you could go is like ascend drastically. Like if Nebraska made a run of the Big Ten final, so they're probably you know they're going to be a eight nine ten. You know, and there's not a lot of difference between those, but obviously the more advantageous spot would to be a would to be a ten, and and I'll add the extra um, oomph here for Nebraska. If you are a ten, that of course gives you a chance to play in our lovely city here. Welcome to Omaha, home hmm. of the dinosaur, right out in front of the Hilton. I saw that. I have, have you seen this dinosaur? I would have thought that I would have visited it several times. Home of swimming competitions, mm. home of baseball games, oh. home of oh. many oh. events. Did you hear about them wanting to add more space under the convention center? Mm. They're trying to add more rooms now. Trying to take that swim mm. competition back? Yeah. From Indy? We need it. We Indy need doesn't it. need another event. Yeah, so the, the only way you can go to Omaha is if you're a 7 or a 10. We'll see. Make that happen, Nebraska. Yeah, you, you're gonna want to. You're gonna want to play in Omaha if you got the opportunity mm-hmm. to. But you can only control what what you can control. All right. Uh, from over the weekend, should we do like a? I feel like we're we're gonna need more time on Caitlin Clark, probably. Yeah. Um. All right. So we'll do Nebraska basketball since we're already on it from last night. Um, they win in front of Kevin McHale last night. Amazing. That's the story. Kevin McHale was there. How cool is that? Husker legend, Kevin McHale. <laughs> put, his, put his number in the rafters. It was, a, it, was not, it was a night for Nebraska where things weren't really going well for them offensively. It was kind of this mucky, muddy game as it was supposed to, um, as you figured it would be, obviously not as many points as the last time around as they went to overtime back in Piscataway. Nebraska had a little bit of an edge to them. Um, I think they checked that box. Just kind of a slog on, on offense. And Rutgers had cut it down, cut it down, cut it down after Nebraska had kept them at arm's length. And all of a sudden you look up and you're like, whoa, hold on. It's a six point game here. What are we doing? And then case a, you know, went full case a mode and, uh, bit the three at the top and did the hands thing, got the and one. Um, but they, they brought that disruptive defense again. It's, it's except for the game that they lost at, at home to Creighton way back in December that doesn't, you know, it's not really applicable to what their season has looked like right now. Um, that defense, them swarming, like I, I wasn't sure if that defensive style was going to equate to consistent success for them. 
because the whole key to it is you're everywhere all the time. Your your hands are in passing lanes, like you are you are attacking and smothering people, and you're running around. And you're late. I mean, that's that's why it didn't work out against Creighton that day because you know Creighton they pick apart those types of defenses where you're kind of scrambling everywhere because they're so good at making the extra pass and they're so good at making skip passes. And if guys are late on closeouts, they're going to kill you with three pointers. And that's what Creighton did that day. But Nebraska was missing that edge that day. In every other home game besides that, they had the edge. I would, I would, I would love to see that game again with Nebraska bringing that edge to the table and the swag and the confidence that they have right now. It's, it's. I mean, it just kind of oozes out of them. Um, so they brought that, and you know that that's good enough to win you, you know, to get you to the NCAA tournament. It's probably good enough if you're not going to have a great offensive day to to maybe win a game in the in the NCAA tournament. Those games can be slogs. They get slow later on. Nebraska just brings that energy and and they grind out games. Um, yeah, they're going to have a chance to do some stuff. So they checked that box last night, which was a good deal for them. We'll talk about a little bit later about. Um, Casey Tominaga. I think there was a conversation going on over the weekend, kind of about like the legacy that he leaves, um, and like how how you remember him and the lore of Nebraska basketball players. Like we always do the thing on the show where we just name old random Nebraska ball players. Love that game. <laughs> we love that game. Like Tominaga probably elevates above that, obviously, but he he's he's there's at least a part of the Venn diagram where he's like in there, but he's also one of the most memorable ones because of the way he plays. And I don't know, like, I don't know what he's meant to the program in terms of like the actual like success part. But if you want to be like, Hey, he's one of the, he's one of the more identifiable guys that Nebraska basketball's had. I mean, we could just go since PBA is opened or since Fred's been here or whatever. Like, yes, he is. People around the conference know who Casey Tom. You think Nebraska basketball, and you think Casey Tominaga, and um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, like that's that's definitely how the conference looks at him at this point. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show, and kind of where to place him in that conversation. We'll also talk about Creighton taking down Marquette, uh, although without Tyler Kolick and Oso Igadaro, that was a bit of a surprise for the game, and of course, uh, plenty more on a Monday. But coming up next, this one's for me. <laughs> thank you josh i'm so excited for you i appreciate that uh there's a book out right now i flipped through it last night the kansas city royals an illustrated timeline um big book glossy you know great pictures and just little blurbs about some of the key moments in in royals history so we'll talk to the uh, author of said book matt stewart who's with fox 4 in kansas city been around kansas city and the royals for a very very long time no shortage of topics from my end, Josh. Uh, and we'll get to that next on 1620 The Zone. The Connor Happer Show. Follow us on Twitter at Happer Show for all the latest news and views. We may even say something interesting once in a while. Unlikely. Really, guys? Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're going to do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialist. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. NebraskaCancer.com Hi friends, Kent Pavelk at Courtside getting ready for this year's matchup between the average roofing companies and the rooferees at John Higgins WeatherGuard. The average roofers are just that, average at best, not very impressive. The rooferees, above and beyond the opponent, more dependable, service that exceeds the norm, good sportsmanship, fairness, and integrity. You know them, you love them, and they're ready to win for you. Make the right call with John Higgins WeatherGuard. It's tip-off time with the rooferees at John Higgins WeatherGuard. Make the right call! Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. 
Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? A man age 50, non-tobacco user can obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $110 per month. Level rate for 20 years. That's right, guaranteed level rate for 20 years. If you're a smoker, there are great rates available for you as well. Call Term Busters for a quote. 1-800-908-7636. You're probably paying more than you should. Call 1-800-908-7636. Remember, call Term Busters. 1-800-908-7636. Sample rate for preferred non-tobacco rate class. Exam required to qualify. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com sports. Ramp.com sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Email on sportsmanlike conduct on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox with whatever is on your mind, from your hot takes to what you think is one. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. We want to hear from you on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. All right, welcome back. More of the Connor Amper Show here on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. The book. Kansas City Royals, an illustrated timeline. Explore the most detailed, informative, and entertaining Royals book ever assembled. Here it is. Right here. If you're watching with us on the stream. Now show that on camera. Look That's at, a beautiful book. Look beautiful at how, photos. Yeah, look at how glossy it is. Who's this? Who we got popped up on the front page? He opened it to the Wasted Talent section. <laughs> right there. Wasted. You want to read about Wasted Talent? You can't write this type of comedy. <laughs> Matt Stewart, Fox Ford, Kansas City, and the author of said book joins us now on the 42 Degrees Source Hotline. Matt, good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on this morning. Good. We uh, we randomly just flipped open uh, flipped open your book here, and it opened up to the wasted talent section. There's a lot of good <laughs> blurbs in here, but there is a lot of exploring of the years that maybe uh, weren't so good. I'm sure that was a fun deep dive. Oh, you know, I lived through all those, so I didn't have to dive too deep. <laughs> it was top of mind for sure. Um, all right. So I, I figured we'd start the conversation with like now and then, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a Royals fan. So I'd like to, you know, look back at uh, when times were a little bit better as well, maybe to the future as well. But I guess we start there. Um, the new ballpark is the maybe the topic du jour. Is it, you know, there's a vote coming up in in about a month and we've seen all these beautiful renderings. How is um how has Kansas City either embraced or not embraced the idea of a, of a new Royals home downtown? That is a great question. I mean, we'll find out April second on the vote, right? I mean, if it passes, then obviously the majority's in favor of it. Um, there's a lot of mixed emotions. I mean, let's put it this way: right now, Kauffman Stadium is so easy to get to. You know, right next to Arrowhead, um, it's kind of just an easy drive, easy parking, lots of tailgating. And so I, I think a lot of people in Kansas City are kind of freaking out about a downtown ballpark. They're like, where are we going to park? We won't be able to tailgate. <laughs> it's going to be different. So, yes, they're going to build a brand new ballpark. It's going to be beautiful, but it's not the same. I mean, for 50 plus years, we've been heading out to Kauffman Stadium and to, to see that stadium, that beautiful stadium with the fountains and the crown scoreboard uh, eventually get blown up so that the Chiefs can take over that space. It's just sad for a lot of Kansas Cityans, I think. Well, what I hear from fans of other teams is like, what? Why? You know, like it's it's like you just said, yeah. it's such a beautiful stadium. And but if you've ever been to a game there, I mean, it's it's definitely worn down over time, and it's been more than a decade now since the big renovations to the outfield area that certainly improved the uh, you know the beauty 
of of said yeah. stadium. But like that would be my my argument. It's like it's it feels like it's kind of just time, you know. And and I I'm from out of town, so when I drive to the games, yes, I do appreciate the ease of it. Um, and and getting in and sometimes getting out, um, depending on the attendance that day. But I I feel like it's just time, and it would make a lot of sense. And it, it, obviously, the new stadium downtown would be would be beautiful. It would be gorgeous. And what people forget is that we're extending our streetcar system, and so there's going to be like an extra three miles down by the plaza by University of Missouri Kansas City where you can park, jump a streetcar. Ten minutes later, you're right in front of the new. Kaufman Royal Stadium, whatever they decide to call it. Um, so actually, parking won't be as big a deal as I think people think it will be right now. What's the excitement for the team um, just right now in in Kansas City? Obviously, there's a lot going on with the Chiefs at being at the peak of of their powers. Um, but I, you know, I I remember times when it was kind of it kind of felt like a Royals town. I don't think it. I don't think you could really take it away from being a a Chiefs town. Um, but you know, there's varying excitement levels depending on what the team looks like going into any given year. And this feels like a group that has a chance to, to really be okay at the very least this year, or at least maybe not lose a hundred games. I think that's the, that's kind of the expectation. What's the excitement level in the town right now? If they lose a hundred games, we're going to run this team out of town. (laughs) Yep. Uh, you know, if you go way back, I would argue that Kansas City has always been a Royals town and not a Chiefs town. I mean, Kansas City Royals baseball, professional baseball has been in Kansas City uh, since the 1880s. I mean, we just, we love baseball. We always have. And you think about those 70s and 80s Royals teams. I mean, they were dominant. They were heading to the American League Championship every year. Uh, they went to two World Series in 1980 and 85. And then, yeah, they stopped spending money on the team. Uh, Ewing Kaufman died. David Glass took over. He used to run Walmart, decided to run the Royals like Walmart, started flashing prices, not drafting great players. We all saw what happened in the 90s, early 2000s. And then he got tired of the losing. And then obviously he hired Dayton Moore from the Atlanta Brave system. Whoa, we're in the World Series two years in a row. We yep. win one. It's awesome. And then oh, we're not going to spend any more money. <laughs> and we're back to where we were in the 90s. And uh, so to see the new owner, John Sherman, spend really more money than almost any other team in baseball this offseason on free agents to shore up the pitching, um, to put money into Bobby Witt Jr., the future of the franchise, to make sure that he doesn't go anywhere else. Uh, there's a ton of optimism for this year's team. I always talk with other fan ba- you know, other other people and their fans of other teams and the the constant reminder that that I always have. I think it I think it's true for for really everybody, maybe with the exception of a couple of the big money spenders in, in baseball. Like no matter what, there's always a window. And maybe we were tricked in 2014 and 15 into thinking, hey, man, they got it figured out, and this is kind of how it's going to be. And maybe if they lose these players, they'll find a way to to recreate that formula. As you look back on that time, um, how, like, I don't, I don't know what other word there is for it outside of, um, you know, kind of un- unlikely, um, surprising in the way that they did it with the collection of guys that they had and kind of doing it back to back there. I mean, how, how, how different was that run? And there's, they still get comparisons that group now to like, here's how you do it. If you are a small market team who wants to win and here's how they did it. Yeah, exactly. It starts with the draft. I mean, you have to hit on the draft and it's so hard to hit on a, a major league baseball draft, but you've got to get the collection of talent and players that you can use later as pawns. And so that's what Dayton Moore did. He was able to trade away some of the pieces um, in order to get the right players, the veterans, the right mix, the pitching uh, to take us to the World Series. And then what happened was after 15, we saw the window was starting to close and he tried to do it both ways. He tried to, you know, trade some of the good players like the Lorenzo Canes or the Wade Davises, but then keep, you know, some of the young talent. It just didn't work. And even here in Kansas City, we were all kind of screaming at him like, look, the window's closing. You've got to go all in. Quit Either go all in or or start or, or or start the rebuild. Like it took him, it yeah, took him three or four other. years to figure out that. Oh yeah, we actually have to tear this thing down and start over. I know, but then you know the drafts just haven't worked. I mean, it was yeah. what was it twenty seventeen eighteen? They 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 drafted all those college pitchers, and you're thinking, okay, now we're starting to come back. And besides Brady Singer, none of those college pitchers have really come to fruition like we expected. Um, bigger trade to build that group, the Alcides Escobar, Lorenzo Kane for Zach Grinke or the James yep. Shields trade. 
I would probably argue the James Shields trade was the bigger trade and only because the Royals didn't know how to win. And winning is a mindset, you know, to, to convince people to win who've never won before. Um, it, it takes a complete 180 of your mindset. And so here you bring in James Shields and Wade Davis from uh, the Tampa organization, and they had won, and they knew how to win. And so they came in and really got everyone on the right mindset, you know, just flipped the script and said, look, guys, quit doubting yourselves. Quit thinking we can't win here in Kansas City. We can. Um, and so I think that was like the impetus that really sparked it. Now, obviously, bringing in Alcides Escobar, shortstop, Lorenzo Cain, center field, I mean, they were incredible talents that we needed to win the World Series. But it starts, I believe, in the mindset, you know? I totally agree. I've, I've been saying this for years. I think James Shields is a way bigger deal than, than people give yeah. him credit for. And um, he also started uh, the greatest baseball game ever played, the 2014 American League wildcard game. We were wondering how long it was going to take for me to finally mention it. I would just like to, I would every year, so we're going on the 10-year anniversary this fall of the 2014 wildcard game. Um, Man, don't you feel old? It does. It Ten does. Years, what? Ten years. I, I, I was there that night. I never went to another playoff game during the run, and I'm honestly kind of happy I didn't because I, I don't. It would it would at least change my memory because there would be more things to add in from from that run. Have you ever Have you ever witnessed seen a better baseball game than what was played that night? No, and you're, I'm going to be ashamed to even admit this, but you know I'm I work. I'm a morning television reporter at the Fox affiliate here, which means I need to wake up at 2 a.m. to go into work. And the wild card game was during the week. And so I was watching it. I'm in front of my television. And I think it was like the seventh inning. And Oakland was up, what was it, like nine to five or eight to four? I mean, it was like, okay, I, this game's over. I was disgusted. And uh, I went to bed. Yeah. But I, I know many game. people who did. I know, but I taped the game, and when I woke up at 2 a.m. and I looked at my phone and I saw that the Royals had won, I quick ran downstairs and like quick fast forwarded to where Salvi, you know, hit it in the game winner, and so I saw it, but just on tape delay. Yeah, I, uh, I, it was so it was seven to three going into the bottom of the eighth, and I'm sitting up it. there in the 400 level, and I just like I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm incredibly lucky. I'm at a playoff game. This might be the only time I ever get to go to a playoff game featuring my favorite baseball team. So I kind of took a walk around. It was like an emotional, like, all right, I have to deal with this now. Um, you know, this, this on my chest, I, this is probably it. And I was like, wow, this is really good. I'm glad they made it. And I'm good with this. And then I sat back down and, and they got, you know, three runs that inning and a couple more in the ninth. And, and the whole thing took off from there. But I, Extra innings, amazing. <laughs> incredible. And so we always have to make a big deal out of September 30th every year. This will be the 10 year anniversary. I love anniversary. it. No, that, that is a day to remember. And you're exactly right. That is the greatest game in Kansas City Royals baseball history. Uh, no, no doubt. And then they did it again. Um, in the, in there's a, I'm looking, I'm open to the page right now. Um, as you call it, the, uh, the miracle at Minute Maid. This is a forgotten, yep. maybe a forgotten about game because they ended up winning the World Series and they were supposed to win the World Series. But the comeback at, uh, in Houston in the ALDS, otherwise, we, we don't talk about this group the same and they don't win the world series. And it, it's yep. like this kind of, you know, un unpieced together thing in our brains. Um, that was another special one. Yeah. I would say that the 2015 Royals, the things people forget is that whole postseason run. They came from behind in a lot of those games. They were trailing in many of those games and came back to win it. And that's what made that run so exciting as a Royals fan is that, and, and you kind of have that confidence. It was kind of like when Patrick Mahomes first took over for the Kansas city chiefs, Remember that Houston Kansas City playoff game and Houston was up yep. was 28 to nothing or something you're like no we're going to come back like you just had this confidence that the Chiefs were going to come back and win and in 2015 in the postseason we had that confidence it didn't matter how far we got down we just knew that this team was going to string the hits together string the runs together they were going to come back and we knew I mean there's just this confidence that this was the year we were going to win the World Series and we did It's an amazing sports feeling I I I like, I don't know that that's ever been replicated at any other time um, for, for any other team. There were, and there, the thing about it, Matt, there was no reason to think, like, other than they had done it before, but they, they didn't have a whole bunch of big stars on their team. But it's like, right. there's, a, there's a comfort in knowing that even if, even if you're down by three, down by four, they're going to give it a good run. Maybe it ends up good. Maybe it ends up bad. It usually ended up good for that team. I, I never walked around with more confidence. It's just like, yeah, they're they're I feel like they're gonna win in whatever position that they were in. 
Well, I think you said it best, it team. I, you know, one of the things that made that team so exciting is because, they, yeah, they had stars, but they didn't have that superstar player. And a lot of times, those teams don't work, right? The superstar, the, all the pressure's on that person, or they're not playing together, or there's jealousy, animosity. But here you had, like, guys that loved each other, played for each other. They were willing to sacrifice for each other. It wasn't about their statistics, that they didn't go up there thinking, oh, I'm going to hit a home run so I can get my next big contract. They were sitting there going, okay, Eric Hosmer is at second base. I need to get him home. I don't, I, I'm okay if I ground out to the first baseman just to move him to third so we can get him home on the next. And they, they were very selfless and played for each other, and that's why it was so much fun to watch him play. Well, because we had those, those years, um, you could look back on the leaner years, which were you know most of the years in franchise history, uh, at least post-1985, and kind of smile and kind of laugh. is like, wow, there were some really... There were some really funny, dumb moments, but it took you know twenty nine years for the Royals to get back into the World Series again. Um, in that in that time, man, there were some rough ones. What what was your favorite story to tell in this in this book about those years? About like post nineteen eighty five leading up to twenty fourteen. Okay, I'm glad you asked because I'm forty nine years old. So I actually started following the Royals in nineteen eighty seven. I was in seventh grade. I was twelve years old. Perfect timing. And I- <laughs> Perfect time. Yeah, yeah. Let's miss a couple World Series. Uh, yeah, but you know, started following in '87, and a big reason I'm such a huge Royals fan was I just loved Bo Jackson. I mean, what an athlete! Just idolized him, loved watching him. You never knew what was going to happen when he came to the plate. And so, honestly, and it's the, my favorite thing about this book, about writing this book, was to be able to really focus and learn more about some of my favorite players growing up. I loved watching Mark Gubazov pitch, you know, so I have a little section on him. And even Brett Saberhagen was amazing. And just the oddness, right? Like every odd year he pitched well, and even years he pitched terribly. And, you know, with Bo, you think about all the amazing running up the wall, um, hitting three yep. home runs in a row, and then hurting his shoulder, trying to catch a Deion Sanders fly ball. And then, you know, after coming back from rehab, next at bat, hitting another home run for four in a row. I mean, just the amazing things that he did, that was really fun to be able to kind of tell that story, especially for those fans that are younger than me, that don't really know that didn't see Bo Jackson play. There's so many great players that came through the system. And it's, I think it's important as Royal fans that we know these guys and appreciate what they brought to the table. Even if we didn't win a whole lot of games. I agree. They're definitely a part of the story. Um, I I was watching, we'll leave you on this, Matt. I was, I was watching an interview yesterday from spring chaining with, with Salvador Perez. One of the guys from MLB network had caught up with them and I, you know, this is not new, but he's got a huge smile on his face. He's, you know, 34 years old now and he's talking about how much he loves to, to be a Royal and, and he's the, he's been named the captain. He's kind of, he's Mr. Royal now. Um, yep. And I, you know, I, I think about, he he is the George Brett, I guess, of this generation of of Royals players. Maybe not as successful. Maybe is or isn't a a baseball Hall of Famer at the end of his career. But he absolutely represents that for me. And I think that's an important thing to have, even when times are lean, especially when times are good. You kind of have to have that guy in the middle. He's he's been that for the last decade plus. Oh yeah, he is the face of the franchise. People love Salvi, and the fact that he's always smiling. He's so approachable. I've interviewed him a couple times, and he's just the nicest guy to everyone he meets. I believe he is a future Hall of Famer. Um, I mean, he he is still one of the best catchers in the league. He's been there a long time. He has batting average isn't great, but you know what catcher is right you know, in the Hall of Fame. So I think when it's all said and done, he'll be a Hall of Fame player. But hopefully, he's got a few more really good years in the tank because we need his bat if we want to get back to the playoffs. No doubt about it. Matt Stewart, you could check out the book, The Illustrated Timeline of the Kansas City Royals, a uh, good primer here for baseball season. Matt, appreciate you doing this, man, uh, and we'll uh, see you at the ballpark, the old ballpark, or maybe soon the new ballpark as well. Yes, thank you so much for having on. And Real quick, so sorry, but if you guys want to go to mattstewartbook.com, uh, you can get more information about that book, Kansas City Royals and Illustrated Timeline. It's beautiful, tons of pictures, the whole history of the team. I know you guys will love it, and I'm glad you have a copy in your hands. I'm glad you're reading it. Enjoy it. Yep. Appreciate it, Matt. Thanks. Thanks. That's Matt Stewart, uh, Fox 4, Kansas City. Uh, the book is super sharp. And, uh, you know, it's also good, you know, if you're, it's also good just like for the bookshelf, you know, yeah. one of those things. It's like, yeah, let me flip through this a little bit. You could have it on the coffee table and just really good short stories yeah. in here and, and kind of timelines of, of the Royals. But I, wa- I did see that Salvi 
interview of the weekend. I thought, man, this guy, why is he just so happy all the time? I love that he's so happy. I never want to see, like, it, it hurts my heart to see him sad. You know, if he's ever, I don't think he's ever really been sad, but there's conversations about trading him and what is he worth and this and that. And that, like, he is so much, he's so much more worth to the Royals than he is any other team or that he would be on the open market just because of what he's what he's brought to the franchise and i know you can get caught up in looking up you know looking up at your old stats and stuff like that and checking the yearbook every now and again but um just from the perspective of what he's you know people like you go to the ballpark and you'll see jerseys of all kinds of royals players but like 60 percent of them are salvador perez you know <laughs> that's that's just that's just what it is and i think there's value in that to a franchise and obviously you know it's increased and enhanced by the fact that he that he won a World Series and he helped bring the town a World Series. So um, I I hope that he's able to finish his career out as a out as a Royal. I know that maybe doesn't make sense to baseball people who are like, man, you got to you can get something for him. You could really continue to build the the future of your franchise. I love the idea of the old grizzled vet bringing it back and maybe he's maybe he's catching sixty games or maybe he's catching forty games. He was doing the interview with Greg Amsinger. And he was like, hey, you're getting old. What are you going to, you know, what, what's your plan for this year? And he was like, well, I think I want to catch 140 games. <laughs> okay. I was like, hell yeah, you do. <laughs> hell yeah, you do. And he goes, you know, I play first base too, you know. And and Greg Game was like, oh, really? You Like, yeah, I played 25 games over at first base. <laughs> Just happy to be there. Love it. I hope they never do them wrong. Don't discount having that old grizzled vet in the clubhouse teaching the guys how to win championship mindset, things like that. Yeah. It's a, it's, that's a real deal. Cause that, that core is good and they're young. I hope he's there when I, I hope he's there and in the lineup when they open their new ballpark. I the, think that the is the Bobby built. I think that is a goal for him to, for him to be there and in the lineup, regardless of what he is or what he's doing. At a, you know, when they open it in 2028 or 2029, I know it's a, it's a long time till there and yeah, he's definitely slowing down a long time from now, Connor, um, you know, but I, I hope maybe he doesn't have to be in the lineup. I, I just hope he, I hope he's an ambassador in some way, shape or form. I guess he's only 33 about to turn 34. He'll be 34 in May, yeah. May 10th. That is correct. Don't ask me why I know that. Uh, that's your guy. Quick timeout. Uh, we'll come back. Thanks for indulging me for for twenty minutes. And yes, we got a Mark Gubaza reference in there, which was very very <laughs> nice. Uh, baseball season right around the corner. Coming back, we'll talk about what you do and do not need to care about, but especially what you don't need to care about. Next on sixteen twenty the zone. Previously on unsportsmanlike conduct, a roughly eleven thousand players in college football, so they're getting six hundred bucks a piece. If you do the math, that's six point six million dollars that they're paying out in NIL deal. No one has negotiated this six point six million dollar figure on behalf of any player. This was a number that they set. Yeah, and I'd be very interested to know how they came to that number, right? Unsportsmanlike conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson, weekdays two to six on sixteen twenty the zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Mostly cloudy Monday, breezy and mild with a high today in Omaha 57 degrees and north northeasterly wind gusts possible up to 25 miles an hour. A few more peaks of sunshine possible this afternoon, becoming mostly clear tonight. Cool with a low of 31. Still a bit breezy at times with northerly wind gusts up to 15 miles an hour. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. The Connor Happer Show returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. Dino here with Leach Camper Sales. You'll be pleasantly surprised to see how affordable an RV can be. We have travel trailers with payments as low as $150 a month for qualified buyers, and they're ready to drive off the lot. Check out our inventory at leachcamper.com and bring us your trades. And don't forget, the uh, shop is always on. Meet Cheryl. Hey, she's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and five. But she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. 
Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase Mobile App is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Wait, what? Add a Robinhood IRA on top, then they'll boost it by 3%. You can do that? And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. Is there a limit to the match? No limit. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires goal for one year from first match must keep IRA for five years match on transfers subject to additional terms and conditions robin at financial llc member sipc not to brag but progressives name your price tool is mankind's greatest tool ever even better than the wheel sure without the wheel we wouldn't have modern transportation or funny videos of dogs riding skateboards but without the name your price tool we wouldn't have easy access to auto insurance options based on our budget and well cars do need wheels they also need insurance and insurance never goes flat Learn more about the greatest tool ever. The Name Your Price tool at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Listen to the Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jays shoot around in overtime shows, the Creighton men's basketball pregame and postgame shows on 1620 The Zone. The Woodhouse Auto Family Blue Jays shoot around in overtime shows are also presented by Union Bank and Trust. Hear the breakdown and coverage about your top-ranked Creighton men's basketball team before and after each game, exclusively on your home for the Creighton Blue Jays. 1620 The Zone, the 1620 The Zone mobile app, and 1620thezone.com. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. If you're having problems in the bedroom, talking about it is the last thing you want to do. Same goes for hair loss, anxiety, or even depression. That's where Hims comes in. Through Hims, you don't have to talk about it. You can do something about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start, where you can find a variety of potential solutions for the problems men face every day and save up to 95% on generic alternatives. The entire process is 100% online, making it incredibly simple, straightforward, and above all, private. If prescribed, treatments made using clinically proven ingredients are shipped directly to your door in low-key packaging. So if you're experiencing ED, hair loss, anxiety, or problems with your general health, you don't have to go to the doctor or the pharmacy or spend all day talking about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start and do something about it. Get started today at hymns.com slash start. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash S-T-A-R-T. By the way, we got a comment on YouTube. A couple, actually, that I want to get to from earlier regarding Nebraska basketball. First from Bayamon Wade. Josh? Yes. Please guarantee that Nebraska will not make the tournament so I can feel confident that they will make the tournament. No path to the tournament for this team. So by this point, if we're still playing the Major League rip a article of clothing off, you're buck naked. I'm, I am naked. Yeah. Yeah. Josh has, been, Josh has been well aware of this developing for a while now. Ever, ever, Really ever since I heroically saved him. Mm-hmm. He maybe tried one other time to think about canceling them, but he smartly held off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, ever since then, it's been it's been pretty obvious where Nebraska was headed here. Yeah, I'd be ashamed if this was all for naught. Not giving up, huh? Land low, <laughs> biding my time. People still bring it up every time Nebraska wins. It's the, like, yeah. Josh, 
Did you see Rem- this? Remember Josh? <laughs> remember he said that bad thing about us that one time? But nobody ever mentions how he was heroically saved by me. It's I very interesting, interesting how that works. Uh, and then we get this from Jordan, who says, Gaysay's four-point play is a single out as pop of heard in person at PBA. I, I believe that, actually. <laughs> Crowd was hot last night. Crowd was hot last night. Crowd was hot in Omaha on Saturday. Two, I mean, we might have had two of the top five crowd pops of all time in each of our local buildings over Whoa. the weekend. And both teams beat a number one team. We should get uh, we should get Robin on to discuss the top five crowd pops at PBA, and then Matt DeMarinas on. You know, Matt Matt DeMarinas to do the top five crowd. Like we'll have him. We'll give him some notice. We'll say, here's what we're going to ask you about. I want you to rank top five crowd pops of all time. Impossible to know the truth. Impossible. It's all a very subjective list. Right? There's, I mean, we, we don't track decibels throughout time. But I do I do think Baylor's um, kind of no-look three-pointer got pretty high up there. Um, and obviously, Casey's four-point play got up there over the weekend. Both showmen, as we discussed. In the we concert. love a showman. We love a showman. Love but show. who is the greatest showman? Uh, that one guy from that one movie. Hugh Jackman. Never saw it. Never it, saw it. It was all right. It was all right. Will we be talking about this Pokemon email that Josh just tweeted at us? I don't think so. Although I do get a lot of emails from a lot of people about a lot of things. Things we should be talking about. Things we could be talking about. Speaking of things people want us to talk about. So... We saw it coming in on Friday, and I know, guys, you got to understand, we have our ears to the ground. We know what's going on. You don't have to tell us right? things that are happening. Like a, a couple times, you'll catch us and be like, oh, man, I missed that story. I didn't see that. Thank you. But we got our ears to the ground. We're reading all the local reporting. We're reading some of the behind the scenes stuff. We're getting behind the scenes. We're talking to people. Yeah, we're texting like, our friends yes. that are in these buildings. We know how We know how stuff is developing over time. And so, yes, I read the Sean Callahan blurb in the tunnel talk on friday morning that said oh here's a little bit for you brian ference was in the offices and i saw that and i thought i'm gonna move on with my life but some people read that and they thought here's what i'll do first step let's screenshot it and put it on twitter one thousand times for all of sean's hard-earned and paid for behind a paywall work will now go out to the public on twitter and not only that so that that work will go out on Twitter, but it will just be the information. Ryan Ferentz was in the offices. And then it allows people to draw their own conclusions about what could have possibly been happening when Brian Ferentz was in the Nebraska football coaching offices. And so we got it, we got it commented to us a whole bunch of times on Friday. And I finally felt the need to respond in the comments, not on the show. I, t- I commented back. I said, yes, we have seen this. We're not going to talk about it. I don't think it's worth talking about. Because I don't. I don't think it's worth talking about. But you all think it's worth talking about. So I'll tell you what's worth talking about about it. This is just like the beef jerky. (laughs) You dweebs have forced our hand. This does not matter. I'm going to tell you once. You're not you're not going to listen to me. You're not. You're not going to listen to me. And that's the most frustrating part of all. That's the worst part. But I'm just going to say it just so I can get it off of my chest. Hear my heart. Let, let me get this off my chest. This does not matter. Not even a little bit. What, Connor? You don't think it's significant that the former Iowa offensive line coach was hanging, parading around? The, you don't think he might get a job here? I mean, he's a, definitely a free agent right now. No, I do not. Nebraska's not going to hire Brian Ferentz to their staff. Coaches talk all the time. Coaches who have been fired, coaches who are currently employed at other schools, just because they're meeting, just because they're connecting with people does not mean a lick of anything. It doesn't mean anything. And frankly, like, there's a whole other layer beyond this that I I don't know that I want to dive into a whole lot here. Um, But... A lot of times when this when these types of things happen, it's not Brian Ferentz exclusively. Um, just coaches come in and they they talk with other coaches. I I think a lot of that has gone rightfully unreported in the, throughout the history of time. Because, like I said, Josh, it just happens. 
coaches come in, they talk, maybe they chatted on the phone once some once of hey, how'd you deal with this? Um, or maybe they are just they had some free time and they wanted to pop in and see, whatever it might be. And most of the time, about a hundred percent of the time, actually, that stuff just goes unreported. And because it doesn't need to be reported, it doesn't need to be talked about. Right. Because we're uh, and then what happens is it gets it gets talked about and it's well, he not only reported it because it matters. Well, no, no, he, no. He put it in the behind the paywall section of the tunnel talk. That's stuff that for the subscribers and, the, and fodder for message board chat. And now it's out there. And be, and now because of it, everybody thinks, and it's not Sean's fault. Everybody thinks that Brian Ferentz is going to be end up as a coach at Nebraska or something like that. I don't know what people are doing with this, but we need to stop. You're making yourselves look bad. It doesn't mean anything. So in like radio meetings and, you know, talking with your bosses, they often tell you, you know, your audience is only half listening to your show. Everyone, I need you to fully listen to this show. Oh, yes. No distractions. We're getting a just deadpan. Here we go. You need to hear me when I say this. If you have at real husker 37 is your twitter handle husker jezebel 29 uh you know if if your profile picture on social media is an old photo of herbie husker you need to hear this this doesn't matter let the grown-ups tell you how football coaches interact with each other they talk with each other frequently and uh, it's not news. You ever heard a coach talk about a coach who had just been fired? Greatest coach ever. Well, why did he get fired? Well, he's the greatest coach ever. I don't know why he got fired. They, it's a fraternity. They help each other. They talk to each other. And you dumb dumbs who have never left your mother's basement don't seem to realize that. Josh, what you went? You went? You went hard. It you needed call them dumb dumbs. It needed to be said. Well, call them dumb dumbs. Maybe it maybe it needed silly billies. That better from the 402. Hi, 402. Josh, quit being so arrogant. Sheesh. Stop being stupid. <laughs> hey, Bront Ferrance step foot on the campus. That means he's gonna wreck the Nebraska offense. Charles writes in on YouTube. I've been out of the basement. <laughs> okay. I get out of the basement. Some things are not things. Some things are, well, or conversely, I guess some things are just things and they're just, they're just things that happen. Um, so it's, it's really okay. Dave writes in. I did. He says, but I saw a guy who was convinced that little Ferentz was going to share all of rules secrets to his daddy. Yeah. Once again, I mean, there, there's a part of this, like maybe that, Maybe that little it's it's a it's a nugget, right? That's what the subscribers on the website pay for. Um, and maybe it's like you said, Josh, I mean, it's it's about how people take the information. And maybe that information isn't necessarily made for public consumption. But obviously, we live in a day right now where if you put anything anywhere, is it a is it a paid for subscriber only? message board of some sort where you can post anonymously or whatever, you know, we have the message board geniuses account, right? Nothing is secret. Nothing is secret. I'm sorry. Nothing is also sacred. I suppose as well. I just, com- I just created a word. No sacred. You want, to, you want to talk about being dumb. I just created my own little word right there. Brandon tweets in. Hey, Brandon. Josh, I think the cool kids now say touch grass. Uh, yeah, yeah, touch grass. We did that rant last week. I didn't like me saying the phrase touch grass. That's how much I hate the phrase touch grass. Brian says condescending Josh kind of sucks. I don't like I don't like doing it. But you keep you keep egging me. You keep going, hey, hey, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Yes, I've seen it. Yes, I've heard about it. It's my job to have seen it and heard about it. Just to recap. Not a thing. Don't ha- we don't have to talk about it all the time. We don't have to mention it all the time. It's an interesting piece of information that doesn't need to be talked about or evaluated or in, or broken down in any way, shape, or form. I had a pork chop for dinner last night. We're not talking about that. Whoa, 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 you Josh. Know why? You had a pork chop? I did. My father-in-law. What happened to steaks? Grilled me a pork chop. Well, you know what happens now after you eat pork chops, right? Uh, 
you become a pork chop guy. Uh-uh. 402-951-1620. Is, does Josh Odson prefer pork chops over steaks? He does not. Huh. I feel like you having a pork chop is pretty good evidence that you like pork chops. Pork chops are coming to Nebraska. They're taking over. Interesting. Interesting stuff. You didn't expect to get that out of that nugget, I really did you? I didn't. Where's this guy turning? But that's why you're Connor Happer. That's why your name is uh, above our heads here. Spin the spin the information however yeah. we want it. You spin it. Damn media. Brian says Iowa people like pork chops. Start the rumor. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Maybe Josh is an Iowa person. I heard Iowa people like pork chops. Pay no attention to what's under my name on 1620 The Zone TV. Joel writes in. Hi, Joel. Don't ruin healthy speculation with logic, Josh. Well, healthy speculation? Are we being healthy? It Are was being, healthy on Friday. We're being healthy right now. We're being unhealthy. I think we're, we're, we're drawing, we're connecting some dots that just might not like, really be connectable. Sometimes there's a, a boy or a girl in your life Who's an overthinker? And, you know, maybe they just got out of a bad relationship. Should I call him? Should I call him? No, you shouldn't. You should just leave it alone. But he posted a photo of a red hat on Twitter. That was that was the that thing. That has to mean that, something. It has to mean something. It's, it's, it's a literal red flag, Josh. Nope, just a red hat. In fact, some people on those social media websites, maybe like athletes that you follow, they hear you freak out about all this stuff. And they will play into the fact that everybody's going to freak out when they do anything and they actually don't mean it at all. So that's like, like a good lesson is the less you care about any of that garbage is probably, you're probably going to end up a, a better, more well-rounded person who does not live in a basement. According to Josh anyway. Oh yeah. yeah. And you'll like steaks instead of pork chops, which is what real people do. Instead of Iowans. Pedro writes in. Hi, Pedro. Hi, guys. Josh's new nickname, Pork Chop. Thanks, Pedro. Pork Chop Josh. I, I believe the coach at Nebraska has that taken. Josh loves Pork Chop. No, that's... Uh, that's uh, No, it's not Pork Chop. Pork Chop was Corey Ross. Yeah. Uh, Terrence Knighton is... Why did I forget his name already? I don't know. It's not Chop. It's like... Uh, uh-oh. Wow. You host a radio show here, huh? Pot roast. Pot roast. Pot roast is a great nickname. But Josh's pork chop because he had a pork chop last night. There's worse things to be called. I don't want to hear it, pork chop. (laughs) You don't get to pick your nickname. You had a pork chop, your pork chop. I'll take pork chop. I'm sure there's a lot of things being said about me. Pork chop brings you the odd news with pork chop. Next on 1620, the pork chop. Omaha's most listened to all sports radio station. Again and again and again. 1620 The Zone. You can find pizza anywhere. But when you want pizza pie piled high with more toppings, that's when you come to my place. Godfather's Pizza. For a limited time, get your hands on two of my large one-topping pizzas. Pick pepperoni, beef. Black olives, you choose all this food for only 30 bucks. Feed your whole mob without breaking the bank. Hey, it's an offer you can't refuse. Godfather's Pizza. Do it. JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers, offers exterior solutions that help you protect your number one investment. Whether it's roofing and siding or windows and doors, they're committed to excellence, quality, and outstanding customer service in every step of the process. When it's time to protect the exterior of your home, your choice is simple. Turn to who the Huskers turn to, JTEC Construction. Check them out online and schedule a free estimate today. JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Is this house a good price compared to others in the area? Are prices going up or down? If I don't make an offer right this very moment, will I miss my chance? These are just some of the questions a home buyer might ask. And these are the sorts of questions an agent who is a Realtor can help answer. Because Realtors have the expertise, data, and access to specialty training to help you navigate the process of buying a home. They provide support, guidance, and have your back every step of the way. That's what Realtors do, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. The Serve Nebraska Volunteer Service Commission was created to ensure that community service would always be a priority in our state. I'm Governor Jim Pillen, and this year, 
I'm inviting you to help celebrate Serve Nebraska's 30th year by becoming a volunteer. Our state's best resource is its people. You have the potential to make a significant impact. Thank you. Sponsored by Serve Nebraska, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Join me, Jimmy Allen, for the Creighton Athletics Hour. We'll be talking all things Blue Jays and interviewing your favorite coaches, so you don't want to miss it. It's the Creighton Athletics Hour, Thursdays, starting at 6 o'clock, only on 1620 The Zone, 1620 the Zone.com, and your 1620 The Zone mobile app. And now we've reached the point in the show where Josh Odson reads the peculiar, the bizarre, the comical, the odd news with Odd Son. Odd news, Odd Son. See what we did there? The Odd News with Odd Son. Old Man Doug tweets in. Hi, Old Man Doug. Since Josh is now pork chop, does that mean he is canceling steak? Well, I think steak. there's only one conclusion to draw. You ate a pork chop instead of a steak. You ate steak and are canceling steak. Unbelievable. Why didn't my father-in-law cook me a steak? These are the real questions we you need, need to be asking. We don't need context. He made you a pork chop. You ate it. You could have eaten a steak. What was I supposed to say? You prefer a pork chop no, to steak. Thank you. I will not eat the pork chop. Josh hates steak. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Damn. Yeah. Pork chop has the odd news, Josh. Hello, hello. Oink, oink. Uh, we go to L.A. to begin our story. Sad news out of the City of Angels. Uh, Steve Ballmer is in some real trouble now. Oh, but... does he not have enough toilets? <laughs> no, he's got plenty of toilets. Uh, but many of them have been damaged as police are on the lookout for two male teenagers who somehow broke into the Intuit Dome, which is still under construction in Inglewood. That's the Clippers' new arena. Mm -hmm. And ran around like they own the place, shooting hoops, climbing on scaffolding. Shooting hoops? Uh, yeah. On what court? There's no court, <laughs> but there are hoops, apparently. Uh, and spraying fire extinguishers. They pulled off the brazen caper last week, and they wouldn't be good members of Generation Z if... Put it on TikTok. They recorded the whole damn thing and put it on TikTok. Damn That's it. That's right, Connor. Damn it. Come on, kids. You could have got away with something really cool. Yeah. You could have been like um, any of those people when they, you know, or wasn't there like a Red Sox fan who like buried something under New Yankee Stadium? Oh, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh, the the chiefs, uh, the construction worker in Vegas who buried a chief's flag under uh, whatever they call that stadium. Oh, uh, Allegiant. Yes, yes. See, you could have done something funny like that and then mm -hmm. told people later, like wrote it in some sort of journal or something like that. Taking photographic evidence, not put it on TikTok, nope. not put it on Twitter or anything like that. And then once the building is set to open, you say, good luck. I just put a... I just put a Kobe jersey yeah. in section 227. Nobody will ever find it because mm -hmm. it's buried inside yep. of the stadium. But no, you decided to fart around and put stuff on tiktok and now you're going to jail sorry the video shows the gentleman climbing a construction crew's ladder at night to gain entry and strolling around the empty hallways and bleachers when they found an unfinished basketball court they decided to take a few shots they should probably consider better security measures there yeah i should not be able to just climb a ladder and get yeah. right in yeah. uh they did all of this while showing their faces and as a result uh inglewood's mayor has since identified the pair and their parents. Is the is the mayor of Inglewood, is his last name Butts? Because the next sentence is, Butts told ABC7. And that's just funny. It will be clear to these young men and to the people who are TikTok followers. James T. Butts Jr. James T. Butts. <laughs> Jimmy Butts. J James T. Butts. Why does it always have to have a middle initial in there when it's Butts? <laughs> 
Sounds like a fake uh, person. You have a moment of TikTok greatness followed by a little bit of misery. We don't play around with these things, said Butts. It's unclear if cops have made contact with the suspects yet or what the punishment might be. Uh, Clippers' new arena set to open in August. They got to take down the TikTok, right? They leave the TikTok I up there. I think so, right? Seems like the the right thing to do. Oh, James T. Butts has got to work on the security mm-hmm. measures. He's got other stuff on his plate. He just he just let a bunch of fifteen year olds take him down. Yeah, this summer at the Intuit Dome, Usher is going to open the arena. Usher, yeah, maybe he'll sweat on the floor. Definitely, he'll just stay there forever. And James Harden will slip on it and not play for twelve games. Johnny Pig writes in. Hi, Johnny Pig. Twitter. Hotter take from Josh: Cancel Sandra Bullock or cancel Steak? Do you have the take of cancel Sandra? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. that's right. You were big on TMZ for that. TMZ bar stool. I was everywhere, baby. Now look at me. You have to stand by both. I do. And you have to dress up like Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Well, I've been wrong a lot. Put yourself out there a lot, yeah. Josh. You, well, you, the lesson here, kids, never try. Stay under the radar. Uh, waking up to the smell of breakfast cooking has got to be one of the finer things in life. But what if you could literally wake up inside your breakfast, Connor? That's what Ego is trying to do with their literal house of pancakes in the middle of the woods. In honor of National Pancake Day, a company best known for making waffles has decided to create a breakfast lover's dream house, complete with a butter-shaped chimney. Butter-shaped? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to push back and say that, you know, chimneys just are naturally butter-stick-shaped. You didn't, you didn't do anything cool there. It's yeah. just... It, just how a chimney looks. Um, all you have to do is book it on the site Home to Go, and it's all yours. It is in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Of course it is. Of course it is. The house is campy and fun. For one, it looks like giant Eggo waffles stacked on top of each other. Yeah, but it's not like made of waffles. No, I thought it was not. made of waffles. No, that would be terrible Difficult. to leave in the woods. The animals would eat it instantly. So I, I'm on the website right now, uh-huh. home to go.com slash ego house of pancakes. And you can request to book it. Let's see. Do I have to pay money for this? Oh, sure. No, it costs zero dollars. Um, so they just have to you I, I would assume they just draw names out of a hat. Okay. Four bedrooms, eight guests, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Um, and then you can book it any of the weekends. Of March. Oh, it looks like I'm busy for oh. all of them. Mm, interesting. So I cannot. I, I figured it was going to be made of pancakes or waffles. No, there's like pancake wallpaper all over the house. Yeah, it's it, all yellow. It, it's stacked full of Eggo products in the freezers. This honestly doesn't even seem that cool. I don't, I don't even want to do this for free. You would have to really love ego not like not just like oh i love waffles like a lot of people love waffles or breakfast foods you have to love ego ego specifically yeah which seems odd this doesn't even seem like a very good giveaway to me mm-hmm. uh we go try from, again we go from one yellow food brand to another uh don gorski 70 years young has extended his guinness world record title for most Big Macs eaten in a lifetime. Oh, really? After he tabulated in 2023, he ate 728. Yeah, so this is the guy who eats a Big Mac every day, right? at least, well, it looks like two a day. He eats, um, he has, he kind of looks like a weirdo and Mm -hmm. he has got the sideburns. He's not, he's not a super like, oh, that guy's got to weigh 800 pounds. Like, nope, he looks like a pretty, I'm not going to say he looks like a normal guy, he is of normal size. He might believe Brian Ferentz is going to coach Nebraska's yeah. offensive line yeah, or something he, like that. He, he looks like he has not touched grass, as the kids say. <laughs> but he goes out every day and gets Big Macs. Uh, 34,128 career Big Macs eaten for Don Gorski. People who have watched me eating a Big Mac often comment that I look like I'm eating one for the very first time, he said. All right, so we've seen the picture of him. I don't know if you know this information, Josh. But let's go ahead and stereotype a little bit. Okay. Where do you think Don Gorski's from? Oh, great question. I don't know the answer to this. Where in America do you think Don Gorski's from? I'm going to go Wisconsin. You nailed it. Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. (laughs) 70-year-old retired prison officer from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, 
ate his first Big Mac about 52 years ago. Wow. 590 calories per Big Mac, by the way. Many people thought I'd be dead by now, but instead I've been a record holder for 24 years. That's he he this. will be dead at some point yes. though. Out of respect to my mother, he says, from 1973 to 1981, I ate one non-Big Mac meal a day because she was worried about my health. Yeah. On April 1st, 1981, she let me relinquish that promise when she said, if they haven't killed you by now, <laughs> go ahead. That's a real quote. So guess what his favorite food is that isn't Big Macs? Oh. Um, well, guess what it used to be because he doesn't do it anymore. But he used to eat lobster during that time when his mom ate, made him eat other stuff. But he says the last time he ate lobster was 28 years ago. He only wow. eats Big Macs now. Uh, he does not eat the fries, and he walks six miles per day. That's he says, good. I'm as healthy as a horse. I weigh 190 pounds, and my cholesterol is 165. He proposed to his wife in a parking lot, in a McDonald's parking lot. Sure. Um, and, uh, yep, yeah, that's the story of Don Gorski of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Wow. What a guy. He started off eating nine Big Macs per day. But now has cut it down to two, one for lunch and one for dinner. Congratulations to him, though. It's he, a big milestone. He buys them in batches twice a week instead of going every oh for every meal. That's even worse. Yeah. You gotta get them fresh, right? I would I would jeez. That's the way I would want it. Yeah. Well, I certainly wouldn't wouldn't want to eat a Big Mac every single day. What's the longest you think you could go? Like you could eat a Big Mac a day for how many days, Josh? Or, or I should say, you could eat only Big Macs, Big mm -hmm. Macs for how many days? I bet I could go four days. I was going to say less than a week. And yeah. then I'm like, mm, you know, this is not as fun as I envisioned if, it. If there was some sort of like prize at the end of the rainbow, like I won a million dollars if I did it for like three straight weeks, mm -hmm. you could probably get me to do it. You'd have to dangle, there, yeah. you'd have to dangle something out there for me. But if I was able to just quit on my own free will and go back to my normal life, I it would take me probably like three days. Yeah. I think that's about right. Um, so yeah, these are these are good stories, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. I was a little me. leery of them going in, I'll be honest. Don Gorski, uh Mayor Butt, and <laughs> uh the Ego House. Ego House. House of Pancakes. A James T. Butts, not singular yeah, butts. Plural. Mr. Plural Mr. butts. Multiple butts. butts. Junior. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's baby butts. Little butts. Little butts in his own house. Yep. That's the odd news featuring pork chop. Uh, we'll come back for the noon hour. We'll talk about the Jays, their win, and where they stand heading into March. Caitlin Clark, and they're trying to throat punch people. Um, Nebraska's new slogan, baseball. Sam McCune will join us at one. Still plenty to come on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. But a very, very important reminder that the basketball championship, the aforementioned basketball championship is approaching, and we have a very sweet deal for you all. It involves Las Vegas. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I, heard, I see your ears perking up there. If you weren't listening to the story about Mayor James T. Butts, listen to this. 1620 The Zone is your chance to score an exclusive watch party. We have a couple chances to win a local 1620 The Watch Party, which is at Backlot Tap House in Exarbin for you and your crew. Delicious pizza, and they'll set you up good there. But the grand prize is we're taking 1620 The Watch Party to Vegas. Las Vegas? Las Vegas, wow. the real Las Vegas, home of Wayne Newton, and you're invited one grand prize winner will score a flyaway to Las Vegas to stay at Circa Resort and Casino. Join in on the fun. Don't miss your chance and your shot to enter in right now. Head to our website, 1620thezone.com. I'm very excited for this prize and the consolation prizes as well, as well at Backlot Tap House. It's 1620 The Watch Parties, powered by Circa Resort and Casino and Backlot Tap House. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. You know what mentality can help you with? Low energy, motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, moody, irritability, impatience, anxiety, and depression. Mentality can help you with their board-certified physicians and their testosterone treatments that can take care of you and get you back in the game. 
You can regain normal function and restore your ability to perform normally at all levels just by mentality. Set up an appointment today. Go to LowTUSA.com. Get back in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and let mentality lead the way. Hi, I'm Kamiko, the founder of Miko's Hot Chicken. When we started our family restaurant, we were also raising a family. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Our Chase Inc. car was there to reward us on all of our business needs. Now we have a thriving location, and we're hungry for more. With the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card, you can earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, so your business can go from here to possible. Chase for business. Make more with yours. Real business owners compensated for their participation. Cards issued by J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member of FDIC. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of FDIC. Terms and conditions apply. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives. But those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. If you're having problems in the bedroom, talking about it is the last thing you want to do. Same goes for hair loss, anxiety, or even depression. That's where Hims comes in. Through Hims, you don't have to talk about it. You can do something about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start, where you can find a variety of potential solutions for the problems men face every day and save up to 95% on generic alternatives. The entire process is 100% online, making it incredibly simple, straightforward, and above all, private. If prescribed, treatments made using clinically proven ingredients are shipped directly to your door in low-key packaging. So if you're experiencing ED, hair loss, anxiety, or problems with your general health, you don't have to go to the doctor or the pharmacy or spend all day talking about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start and do something about it. Get started today at hymns.com slash start. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash S-T-A-R-T. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the Rooferies at John Higgins Weather Guard. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. All right, Pork Chop, what do you think about Nebraska's new slogan for the offseason? I haven't heard it yet. You haven't heard it? No. You don't know what it is? No. I touch grass. I don't follow the inner workings of that football team. All what do you, what all do you think? It, what do you think it should be? What do you think their cool, new, fun slogan should be? Roll on with Dylon. No, it's not about Dylon. Dial in on Dylon. No. Well, he should be the focus of this thing. No, you have to keep uh, Dylon under under wraps. Don't let anybody fa- find out about our good friend Dylon. Run it back. I don't know. Run it back. We don't want to run that crap back from last year. What do we have to do that's better from last year? What has to be better, Josh? The offense, the winning of games, winning of games. Okay, but two, two more games, one more game, finish. You're getting real close. Oh. You're you're approaching the right territory. Hell. Oh, come on. I can do this. Um now why don't we why don't we do this? Why don't we go to Nebraska's schedule from last year mm. and we look at 
some of those games at the end of the season. Remember they were five and three at one point. I do remember that. I remember you booking yep. trips to Vegas, yep. which is just kind of what you do now. Apparently I just go to Vegas. See you there with the, with the 1620, the watch party, by the way. And you know what happened? After they started five and three, Josh, they did not. Not only did they not win any more games, but they lost the next game by three. And then they lost the next game by three. And then they lost the next game in overtime, but not by three. Shout out to Chuba. And then we lost, and then they lost the last game by three. So what would you say they need to do, Josh? going into next year based off of the fact that they lost all those games by three or an overtime shout out Chuba. four more points four more points one might think that would be the slogan but instead what? as old man doug pointed out from earlier what they're going for ties they're chasing three this offseason oh that that documentary they're show. chasing three no new catchphrase that's chasing, what that means yeah it's yeah that's the, i thought that's, they were like chasing dale earnhardt that's their whole <laughs> nope it's not about raise hail praise dale you don't want to chase him by the way it did not end well well he had a good career before that one day you're right you're right but that's what nebraska is doing they're chasing three they lost four big remember they remember they lost to minnesota how many points was that by josh Three, you nailed it. Don't know how you thought of that, but <laughs> it's true. Well, you asked. They lost four Big Ten games by three points last year. I mean, they could do like thirteen, lucky number thirteen, and get thirteen total more points. In fact, why don't they, why should they should have just done this? They lost three separate football games, thirteen to ten, last year. <laughs> Remember that? They lost the. Minnesota game thirteen to ten. They lost the uh, uh, the Maryland game thirteen to ten. They lost the Iowa game thirteen to ten. Thirteen to ten. They should have been like the fourteen to thirteen boys or something mm-hmm. like that. But they didn't think about that. No field goals. Yeah, don't lose by field goals. No, they're chasing three. They're going for ties. Josh, grade that slogan. I'm I'm gonna have to go hard here. I'm that's an F. F. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't okay. really like it that much. Okay. I was going to say, what do you want me to do? D minus? I thought pass, we were over sloganeering. Pass them through to the next. Yeah. I thought Scott Frost canceled sloganeering and we weren't doing slogans anymore. And here are the slogans all the time. Well, we said 1% when... better. And uh, and we're bringing the, uh, no, three, three points. We said when Matt Rule got here, you know, everybody. He's got a little PJ Fleck in him. He does. And that has been confirmed now over and over and over again. I don't this is my taste, Josh. I don't need any slogans. I don't need any slogans. I would have preferred it if you they didn't do a slogan. Have a slogan in the locker room in camp. What like have that, but I don't need to know what your slogans are. You know, they're gonna get they're gonna come up with all the weightlifting videos soon. And they're gonna be like the dudes gonna be trying to get up like six hundred pounds in the bar. And the you know Corey Campbell's gonna be there. Three more, three, three more points. Remember we lost by three all those times last year. <laughs> That's what they're gonna I'm say. I'm a freshman. I don't. <laughs> That's what they're gonna say. And I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like, oh man, that's kind of sad. It's kind of disappointing. Let's highlight the fact they lost all those games by three points last year. But if they, they went should to be overtime. chasing four, they should be chasing four. They went to overtime. They definitely would have won them all. That's true. They would have. Chris M writes in on the Equitable Bank inbox. Hi, Chris. If you lost by three, shouldn't you be chasing four so you could actually win those games rather than go to overtime and possibly just lose in overtime? Anyway? They did that once. <laughs> they were least. tied at the end of at the end of four quarters. Oh. Yeah. I don't I don't love this. I don't need it. I don't need the slogan. No. I just get I'm I'm kind of done with that at this point. Whatever. Just tell me how good you're going to be at football. Just t- teach me more things about nylon. That's fine. I don't think like, like, cause that's getting awfully close to being like, Hey, we were close. 
last year. Oh, yeah. Nobody wants to hear that. Like, like, we love Matt Rule. I think he's doing a great job. I implicitly trust him. You know, like, I, I have I have so much trust that he'll do the right thing. Um, and that they'll eventually win games. Win games. But I don't really need to hear about it. Honestly, I think we could just flush last year completely. They built... They built a lot of the uh, the platform that they'll be standing on this year. Very, the foundation, very together last year, you know things like that. But I, I like I don't look at that offense and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I like that offense. It just needs to get three points better. I like I like the whole setup that you had last year. I think it just needs to get three points better. I really don't. I could just really I could really do without any reference to last year. But obviously they want to yeah. build and they want to be the builders and, and you know, stuff like that. I just don't like, I'm not trying to be critical. I just saw that. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what, are we, what, what are you doing there? A uh, text from the seven, six, Oh, hi, seven, six, Oh, this is directed toward you, Josh. I think Oh no, you're an F you graded the slogan an F you're an F I'm an F you're an F. You're in California where nobody works. Brian writes in. I have a job. Should be chasing two safeties. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're not going to get any field goals. Yeah. The that's offense sure. isn't going to do it. Yeah, yeah, the okay. offense isn't going to get it. That's there. actually a very well thought out response. Much more than I'm an F. Travis writes in on YouTube. Hi, Travis. Being anti-sloganeering didn't work out well for the previous regimes. Bleep it. I'm down to get weird. We prepared you guys for this. We told you that Matt Rule is going to do some funny, you know, weird stuff. And he's in his bag right now. He could do no wrong. What if he brings the smock back? Then it'll really be cooking. Do you think he asked and Adidas was like, no. Here's Theo who writes in only weird things in the comments and only has weird concerns. What up, weird Theo? Uh, Sadie, nobody calls him Sadie, eliminating all of the option plays because of Dylon. The offense will look more like 2017 than 2023. Okay, I hope to God this isn't a real concern. Or is this real? Do people think this? Or is this just Theo talking about things that nobody else cares about? Well, if you're what what are the, what are the strengths you, of Dylan Riola? I, what are his strengths? I can tell you with great certainty that Nebraska will not be running the option this year. It won't happen. They're not going to do it. And if that triggers you in any way, shape, or form, you need to just go ahead and take a step over to the side, look at yourself in the mirror, and reevaluate yourself. You need to think about what your priorities are. If your priorities are like optioned football up here, you see where my hand is? It's way up here. And then like winning football games is like down here. Get a grip. Get Get a grip. Get a grip. Do something else with your life. Do not turn this into the season where Nebraska implemented the West Coast offense and everybody was like, I don't know. I think th- I, th- I think they're throwing the ball downfield too much. Nebraska has sucked at doing absolutely everything over the last 20 years, and this staff has our permission to do whatever they see fit. I do not care if they run the option. I do not care if they, like, whatever, however you want to build the offense around the players that you have. There should be no consternation about how Nebraska wins. This is how Nebraska does it. Theo is oh followed my up. my God. All caps from Theo. Rayola had negative rushing yards junior and senior year. Yes, that's why, that's you, why you don't run the option. That's why you don't run the option. Because <laughs> he cannot run. All right. So Ta-da. I just wanted to hear from everybody else on that. Got a hell of a chooch, though. Uh, tra- Travis says. Yeah, uh, no, this is just Theo spouting off his weird conspiracy theories. And also good. We don't need the option with dialing. Hashtag sling the rock. Thank you. Hashtag sling the rock. Now there's good slogan uh, There's a slogan. Tom writes in on Twitter. Hi, Tom. Bleep it. I'm down for weird stuff. It's much better slogan than chasing three. <laughs> I agree. I don't love the slogan. That's okay. I don't really care how good or bad their slogan is anymore. If it works. I'm going to stop caring about this. God bless Nebraska basketball and Creighton basketball, and all the things that are taking our attention away from the GD Matt drills. 
God, I couldn't care less about the mat drills. <laughs> Why do people care so much about the stupid mat drills? You guys don't need to care about this stuff. Find something better to do with your time. It's really amazing. Wow, Connor Happer here for people touching grass. Please touch grass. Do it. Care about stuff that matters. God bless good basketball teams that take focus and attention away from the stupid videos. We got them. Hey, have you seen the video that they put out from the drills, from the lifting the weights? I have not. No. No, I haven't. It's great. I don't plan on it. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it anytime soon either. But I appreciate your concern. Johnny Mills in. Hi, John. Maybe Nebraska is chasing three more wins and not three more points. Oh. Hello. I'd get you to eight. Eight is good. We'd like eight. That doesn't make it a better slogan, though. Chasing three. Why not chasing four? Why not chasing five? Shouldn't you want to score more points and more points and more points and more points? Chasing 14. Chasing 14. Chasing 57. Why not? Chasing 1994. Here's from Hayden. He says, I, I thought it. an interview rule said that we need to get three points better in all three phases of the game. So three points on offense, three points on defense, three points on special teams. So that's actually chasing nine. That does ring a bell, actually. That okay. Said that. Yeah. Well, then, just... then it's nine. If I need to find, if I need to do a deep dive on what the thing actually means, then it's probably not that good. Make it make it easy to understand, easy to digest. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Oh man. All right. Uh quick timeout. Thank you. Thanks for letting me get that off my chest. I appreciate it. That's what we're here for. That's what this format is. Uh, uh, by the way, if the, the AP poll is out again. Oh, AP poll. It's Monday. Our favorite part of a Monday show. It's Monday, it's noon. The AP poll is out. Now did oh. they do it? Did they do it? What? Did who do it? Did Rank the Nebraska? AP do it. Did they rank Nebraska? Yeah. No. Nebraska didn't even get a vote this week. But they were receiving well, Nebraska votes. Nebraska lost left. this week. It lost to Ohio State. You that's, can't get any votes. That's old news. They lost the game they and they won get no last more night. votes. I thought they were the best team in the country. No votes for Nebraska this week, mm, sadly. So we cannot calculate how many spots they are outside of the AP Top 25. Once again, find something better to care about. Creighton is number 10. Top 10 team. Top 10. Top 10 Creighton. Top 10 Creighton. Nebraska did, however, receive one vote in the coaches poll. Mm, which coach was that? Would love to find out. I don't have a breakdown of who voted for what on the coaches poll. That it was Matt Painter. He, he loves him some Nebraska. <laughs> all right, coming back. Uh, Caitlin Clark, very normal person, not at all polarizing. Did some things over the weekend. Travis Scott was there. Jake I mean, from he State only Farm goes was to there. normal places. T-shirt cannons were there. Gus Johnson was there. I was not. Lisa Bluter was there. Big Ten Protocol wasn't there. Coming up on 1620 The Zone. Previously on the crossover. All right, let's see. So Danville Dairy Daddies. Look at that. Look at that horny cow. Look at the eyes on this bad boy. <laughs> is, is the cow giving the eyes? Uh, there, there's something weird about that. Uh, no, I can't say. He is Never a bull. Mind. This is a Dairy Daddy. Oh, his name is Mick Creamy. Got it. Perfect. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer Show on Sportsmanlike Conduct, six a to six p, sixteen twenty. The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Mostly cloudy, mild, and breezy for your Monday with a high today in Omaha, 57 degrees, and north northeasterly wind gusts possible between 20 and 30 miles an hour. Mostly clear and cool tonight, breezy early out of the north. Overnight lows near 31 degrees in Omaha. Sunshine to get you started Tuesday, becoming partly cloudy, mild, with a high of 60. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. You can find pizza anywhere, but when you want pizza pie piled high with more toppings, that's when you come to my place, Godfather's Pizza. For a limited time, get your hands on two of my large one-topping pizzas. Pick pepperoni, beef, black olives, you choose all this food for only 30 bucks feed your whole mob without breaking the bank. Hey, it's an offer you can't refuse. Godfather's Pizza. 
do it. Dino here with Leach Camper Sales. You'll be pleasantly surprised to see how affordable an RV can be. We have travel trailers with payments as low as $150 a month for qualified buyers, and they're ready to drive off the lot. Check out our inventory at leachcamper.com and bring us your trades. And don't forget, uh, child fees always on. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Mario Street Tacos or Steak and Chorizo Queso Blanco Enchiladas can only be found in one place. Fernando's. Great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's. Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. If you're having problems in the bedroom, talking about it is the last thing you want to do. Same goes for hair loss, anxiety, or even depression. That's where Hims comes in. Through Hims, you don't have to talk about it. You can do something about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start where you can find a variety of potential solutions for the problems men face every day and save up to 95% on generic alternatives. The entire process is 100% online, making it incredibly simple, straightforward, and above all, private. If prescribed, treatments made using clinically proven ingredients are shipped directly to your door in low-key packaging. So if you're experiencing ED, hair loss, anxiety, or problems with your general health, you don't have to go to the doctor or the pharmacy or spend all day talking about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start and do something about it. Get started today at hymns.com slash start. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash S-T-A-R-T. Maverick baseball and softball home openers are here. Maverick softball opens Thursday with Valparaiso at Clawson Field, and baseball opens with Portland on Wednesday at Tal Anderson Field. Get your season tickets or single game tickets by calling 402-554-MAVS or going to omavs.com slash ticks. Also, this weekend is the hockey series finale as Maverick Hockey takes on third-ranked North Dakota. Get your hockey tickets by calling the box office at 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Got an email from Mark. Hi, Mark. On the Equitable Bank inbox. Uh, Mark is wondering about the hockey poll. Well, we got that for you. We're big on the polls. So we have all the polls. Let's do that hockey. We should actually do Monday. Every. Yeah, I guess Monday the AP football poll comes out mm-hmm. too, right? It does. We should just do a poll segment. We should just collect all of the polls and mm-hmm. then disperse them to you in a clean segment on Monday, the poll segment. Billboard. Here's the rankings. Here's what we got. All right. The poll boys. So I don't know what hockey, I don't know which one we care about the most in hockey, but I have two options for okay. you. I have the the USA Hockey Rink Live Men's College Hockey Poll. Mm, sounds official. Or the USCHO Division I Men's Poll. That's the one the NCAA is pushing out. That's on the one they accounts. care about the most? Yeah. Um, so those were last released last Monday. Are they updated as of today? I've got one from an hour ago from USCHO. Okay, the USCHO poll. Where are the, where are the Mavs? Mavs are 16th. 16th. Now, in the USA Today slash USA Hockey Magazine men's college hockey poll, um, it appears that Omaha is 18. Oh, inferior poll. Nope, this hasn't been updated yet this week. Okay. All right, thank God. Oof, how dare yeah. they? How dare they? Uh, I've got number three, North Dakota, coming to the Baxter. The Mavs are cooking. This weekend. The yeah. Mavs are cooking right now. Bit of a streak. 
got him going. I know, I know the Miami of Ohio is nothing to write home about, but you, you did the job. You beat college at Charleston last weekend, and now you got North Dakota. Colorado from, College. Or, I'm sorry. What did I say? You said College of Charleston. College of, I was thinking C of C, Co- <laughs> uh, Colorado College. My apologies. It's okay. I was there. I know. Now, yeah. No thanks. Um, now, like, I, I don't advocate for, hey, we need to sell tickets to a game based on, like, location tracking and zip codes, but keep the green out of Baxter Arena this weekend. Thank you. Pack the Baxter with not green. Yeah, you can wear black, red, maybe white, but, you know, North Dakota's probably got some white kits, sweaters. Whatever. Just no green. No hawks in that building this weekend. Not going to happen. Got to be got to be there. Got to be loud. Got to be rowdy. We must back the back. Maybe a little bit belligerent. Whoa. Just a little. Just a dash. Don't, careful. I'm advocate for belligerency, Josh. Don't get arrested. <laughs> okay. But make it a tough place to just play. Just a little belligerent? Yeah. Bull question? Just a little belligerent? It'll be up at half you show. Can you be just a little belligerent? That's a good question. Because I, I think you're either full belligerent <laughs> yeah. or not at all. Yeah, put that up there. At Happer Show on the EJ Tech Construction Zone Twitter feed. All right, Caitlin Clark. She passed Pistol Pete over the weekend. Very normal. Very, very normal sequence of events that led to her going to the free throw line. I was dying for a sad trombone while she was shooting <laughs> the free throws. <laughs> Can I tell you? Didn't how, get it, sadly. How I consume ah, this, is big Ten protocol. this all-time moment in college basketball history. Please tell me. I'm, yeah. I'm watching it, and the the Iowa gets fouled at the bucket with three tenths of a second left. I say, well, we can change the channel now because Iowa certainly will not be Caitlin Clark specifically will not be scoring with three tenths of a second left in mm-hmm. the half. Mm-hmm. We can change the channel. We can move on with our lives here. Time to go to halftime. And then I get a push notification that Caitlin Clark has broken the record. I'm like, that's nope. They must have sent that out prematurely because there must have been an error in Bristol. Because you didn't even check. You didn't even think not. to look back. And and so so we pulled the game back up. We rewound and we're like, oh, a technical foul. Pretty shocking stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, so there was contact between was caitlin and an ohio state player and maybe caitlin initiated that contact this is after the whistle is blown seemed to have been a little shoulder bump on her part and then she's just trying to get to her team's huddle though she's she's really a savvy savvy player she is she goes in and and then you know she gets a little shove a little shove a minor shove but nothing to blow a whistle over and then you know the whistle blew the the whistle blew <laughs> She loves to flail her arm. She She's does. a flailer. She likes to flail. And then later in the game, there was a situation where she was on the ground uh, trying to get a loose ball covered by a couple of Ohio State players. And um, then the whistle comes and Ohio State's uh, J.C. Sheldon tried to get in on the action a little bit. She tried to get the ball out. And Caitlin tried to throat punch her. <laughs> you know, the old jab to the throat. She missed, luckily. she oh, got I'm the familiar. She got the chest. She went for the old throat jab. She was not called for anything. Interesting. Yeah. She is amazing. She is the most polarizing basketball player that I could think of in in quite some time now. She somehow has this combination of, I mean, she on one hand, she's the greatest women's basketball player of all time, like bar none, right? She's She's got all the records and everything, and She's done all these amazing things to the sport to no help rings. It gain viewers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, who who said that? Jay Williams. Thank you, Jay Williams. Appreciate that. But like she she's incredible. So she's that on one hand, and and she deserves absolutely all the accolades. Um, and like when she's in public, she handles her, like there's no controversies or anything like that, aside from how she conducts herself on the floor. So she is she has taken the ultra rare combination of being this incredibly great player while also on the other hand being Brad Davison. <laughs> she's like an all time she's an all-time both. She's all-time basketball player, but also all-time heel. It's incredible. It's she is like we, she, me and Chatel were just talking about this over the weekend. 
um, going through the history of some of these guys that we've just kind of like, and yeah, the, that's a big, like Air, the Aaron Kraft, the Brad Davidson, like whatever. We were sitting around after the Creighton game talking about some of those dudes. And like Caitlin is as good of at being a heel as all of those players ever were. But the thing about those players is that they knew that they weren't the best players on the floor. So they had to be, they kind of had to be the heel, right? Caitlin is obviously the best player on the floor in every game she's in. And she's still the heel. It's incredible stuff. That's why she's so polarizing. That's why people watch her. It's a lot like when uh, I know the, the little siblings in the audience can, could relate to this where, uh, your older brother or your older sibling, your older sister, uh, the mom and dad think, oh my gosh, just the best kid does her chores, gets a, a honor roll. Yeah. And when nobody's looking, that person's just pounding you into the ground. Throat punching just everyone. Throat punching you like, <laughs> do my laundry, kid. You think that guy's cool? You think that guy's nice? You want me to be like that guy? That guy sucks, mom. <laughs> hey, don't say sucks. Ah, now I'm the bad kid. You got to be a little bit more like Caitlin. Okay, just be a little bit more like Caitlin. No, Caitlin's a jerk <laughs> on the floor. If you only knew, she's a mom. Great, she's a great kid. She is a great kid, and I do not. Uh, I don't take anything away. She's done a great job from like a marketing perspective and like all this stuff. She's doing everything right off the floor, but when she gets on that floor, something something switches inside of me. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is. This is a very different thing that I'm used to. She, I don't think she can control it either. I think it's just her alter ego. Yeah. Just I think it's just an editor. Yeah, she gets out there and it's just like I, nothing, nothing could go wrong here. This is my sanctuary. I will be throwing my arms up one Con- way or the other when this game is going on. Connor, if she was a man, you'd say she had that dog in her. <laughs> do, do you respect her? Embrace Travis says on YouTube. Hi, Travis. Do you respect her embracing the embracing the heel? He you, add, he adds it's a Jekyll and Hyde situation. It really is. Um, that's why yeah. it's so hard to talk about her because like like we I, can watch I want this to heap stuff. Praise on her. It, it she is the type of person that old school dudes will go back and be like, yeah, like I I can't stand some of the stuff that. She does. I can't, I can't, I cannot stand some of this. And that's why she gets the crap that she does. Like I, I, I kind of understand it. I kind of get it, but you can't, you also can't deny that she's the greatest college women's basketball player that we've ever seen. Can't deny it. I cannot. And I will not. Thank you. Jay Williams. I appreciate that. Go hop on my bike now. Uh, Jack John writes in. Hi, Jack John. Can we cancel the, you don't know ball people. Creighton fans, next time you attend a game with the Chai, take a look around. 99% of those folks in blue won't watch another basketball game until the next Creighton game. You probably don't know ball either. No, I love that you don't know ball people, actually. I, I am one. But it's not real. Like, it's not. I don't actually tell people that you don't know ball. It's ironic. It's I, I ironically tell people that you yeah. don't know ball. I think it's a fun bit for me. Anyway, back to Caitlin Clark. She tried to throw punch that girl. She did. How dare she? What's she doing that for? She doesn't need to do any of this she stuff. She knows, hey. It's my day. I don't think she conscious. See, I, that's where we disagree, Josh. I don't think she consciously does any of this. I actually I, agree. I think that she's outside of her brain while uh-huh. she while she plays basketball. And um, like during she, that halftime like, interview, she was very yes, very normal, very yeah. You know, we got a we, very X's and O's. Like, when the like, game is going game. on, she cannot control herself. Yeah. I don't think she knows what, what what she's doing, where she's going, and she like she just lets her pure instinct take over on everything aaron and papillion what do you think of this comp christian leitner great player great heel Mm -hmm. that might be the one that might be the best one dream team member hope her pro career goes better than his like those other two those other two big 10 guys that i mentioned Mm -hmm. they were good players they were not all-time dudes you know right they were good players now they they get remembered by their fan bases at all time as all time dudes because they were winners. You know, they just win. Look at that guy. He just makes winning plays. Yeah, that's just a, that's just a guy like we could see this from the like Grant Gibbs was that at, at Creighton, right? 
he understood what he could and could not get away with and sometimes took advantage of the things that he could get away with. Caitlin Clark has this Caitlin Clark has that to her as well. Grant Gibbs also from Iowa. People forget. Mm. But well, we do have to be honest about it a little bit. I mean, she's she's a total heel. So we got these Iowa people being like, I mean, I don't understand what people can't embrace about her. Like you don't? <laughs> like you if are you just, the referee with take, the back turn? Take off your goggles for one second and watch an Iowa game. Like pretend that you have no affiliation with the program. You'll watch her play and you'll be like, Whoa, what's she doing? What what's she doing out there? And there's no doubt that it's good for no, it's good for viewers and it's good for the convert, like we are talking about it now. It is good for that. It is good for that. I think it would be exhausting if I were her, but it's definitely good for for the talking about. Oh, we're talking about women's basketball. Yeah, we talk about. She's it an insane person, pretty frequently on the show, and that's great. Uh, Pedro writes in. Hi, Pedro. Hi, guys. During the broadcast, announcers named other women basketball players as the best players ever: Cheryl Miller, Diana Tarazi. Better players. They won titles. Yeah, I'm just not going to trust uh, Gus Johnson's take. Like, whoa! There, I also think there's a difference between great greatest players of all time and best players of all time. Pivotal players in the story of women's college basketball. Yeah, I mean, paved the way. For... She's undoubtedly one of those. Yeah, I mean, she she is one of those. Just as those other people are mm-hmm. one of those. But like, I I mean, as as far as like the best players of basketball. You could probably put Cheryl Miller, Miller into that conversation too. But like, I, she's the best one that I've seen. Maybe I just—I ha- mean, I admittedly haven't been alive as long as some of uh, some others. I'm, I'm a young, I'm a young gentleman, a young boy. Brag, but um, yeah, she she's the best women's basketball player that I've seen. Is she the greatest? No, she doesn't have the titles to say that she's the greatest. I mean, she's clearly ducking Brit Prince. She's done. <laughs> I didn't even know about that bit until somebody mentioned it to us. The things that you guys think about. You guys are crazy. You guys are crazy, man. Shout out to Britt Prince, though. Getting that getting that natty. Getting that statey. Statey. Yeah. Forum. She said, ring me. Remember when Caitlin said that? I do. I do. She did not get that ring. She did not. She did not get that ring. But congratulations to Caitlin and Jake from State Farm. Oh, one yeah. of one of the greatest marketing people we've ever seen. I mean, seriously, State Farm does such a good job. They just put this guy everywhere. Where do you want to go today, Jake from State Farm? I'd like to go courtside and sit at the Caitlin Clark game. Great. We'll get you a cool sweater. We'll get you a vest from Kyle Usechek's wife. Awesome. You could shoot the you could uh shoot the t-shirt cannon if you want to, too. <laughs> Sounds good. It's all an ad for State Farm. What a, what Incredible. A, what a weird life he's carved out for himself. What's Travis Scott doing there? I I don't know. What is Travis Scott doing there? I have no idea. What's Nolan Ryan doing there? I have no idea where these people are coming from. They all want to witness the greatness of Caitlin Clark. Weirdest celebrity at the game last night. Travis Scott. Tra- I mean, does it, what, yeah. what kind of sense does it make for Travis Scott to be there? What kind of sense does it make for Nolan Ryan? To Nolan be there? Ryan, it's definitely weird, but it's like less of a scale, I suppose. Right? I'm great, and I love greatness. Well, I mean, Nolan Ryan and Caitlin Clark would kind of handshake me, and they were both, yeah. like, they were both yeah. kind of heels in that regard. Both all-time greats. Nolan Ryan saw that throat punch and was like, mm, yeah, she can take it. Uh, she can swing it. I like this. I like this. <laughs> I could do a little bit of that. Uh, Asian Joe writes in. Hi, Asian. He said, <laughs> Caitlin reminds me of how polarizing LeBron was and is. Both are generational talents. Both are whiny on the court, but both handle their brand well and are professional off the court. Anyone over the age of 42 loves to tell you how much LeBron James whines. He does whine a lot, but he's played in the league 20 years. We know this about him by now. Wouldn't you say the same for Caitlin? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I, I like the cop. I like the cop, actually. Like, kind of remind me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I should get every is call. That, I'm a superstar. I, I think LeBron is probably a little, surprisingly, this is a, maybe an amazing thing to say. 
LeBron might be actually less boisterous about it. He he complains, but maybe less and le- definitely less boisterous about it. It was just constant with Kaylee. Constant. Just always, always throwing her arms up in the air. You've seen it firsthand. A lot. Too much. Annoyed by it all the time. But I do respect. I, I R2 pecked Caitlin Clark. <laughs> R22 pecked Caitlin Clark. Surprised Nike didn't do that one, by the way. Should have. Yeah, that would have made sense. Oh. All right. Anyway, we'll come back. Uh, we'll talk about the Blue Jays from over the weekend. Their takedown of Marquette, Sands, Tyler Kolick, and Oso Iguodaro. Different deal. Crowd pops. Senior days. And uh, how the season might finish off for the Blue Jays. Coming up on the Counter Hamper Show on 1620 The Zone. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Post Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Post Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Hey fans, looking for the best seats without the hidden fees? Then you need to check out Tickets for Less. Whether it's Creighton Games, Husker matchups, or big-time concerts and events, they've got you covered all with no service fees. Now, you're ready to score a deal? Use the code THEZONE at ticketsforless.com and save on your next event. You prefer to go mobile? Grab the free Tickets for Less app and shop with ease. Every seat holds a story, so find yours and save when you use the promo code THEZONE at ticketsforless.com and the Tickets for Less app today. Not to brag, but Progressive's Name Your Price tool is mankind's greatest tool ever. Even better than the wheel. Sure, without the wheel, we wouldn't have modern transportation or funny videos of dogs riding skateboards. But without the Name Your Price tool, we wouldn't have easy access to auto insurance options based on our budget. And, well, cars do need wheels. They also need insurance. And insurance never goes flat. Learn more about the greatest tool ever. The Name Your Price tool at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees. The Source. By your mom. Mom's house. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Here comes the clown. All right, welcome back. Sorry, I dropped my phone. It was a harrowing. I had received a text from a local media personality Mm. who had a good point. Astro World and Astros World, Travis Scott was actually there to see Nolan Ryan. Astro, Astros. Hi, Mr. Ryan. I just wanted to stare at you and be in your presence. Here in Iowa Maybe City. He named Astro World after Astro's World, like Nolan Ryan. I hear it's I hear Iowa City's lovely this time of year. I just had to see it for myself. Also, I'm learning a lot about Travis Scott. So Adam writes in on the Equal Bank inbox. Hi, Adam. 
Travis Scott was there because Caitlin Clark recently signed with Nike and her first show shoe that gets released will be a Travis Scott version. Now you got me there, Adam, because I didn't know that there was a Travis Scott shoe. But maybe I am old. People are still doing business with Travis Scott, huh? What? Did he get canceled for something? Uh, well, I did the, 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 the concert thing and the unpleasantness there. Oh, yeah. How all that stuff, like all those people died. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, wasn't his fault. Apparently, that's what we've ruled. <laughs> well, look at this. Nike X Travis Scott. The Nike Travis Scott collaboration is second to none. La Flame is renowned for unrivaled design choices, taking Nike sneakers to new hype heights. Find everything from the Air Max One Cactus Jack oh. in Baroque Brown. Bang, bang. To the Jordan 1 X fragment design. Complete with the backwards swoosh, discover the Travis Scott SB Dunk Low. Wow. Those were a lot of words. Those are shoe names. Yes, clearly. Would you like to buy... Josh, let me see. Which one would you be most interested in hearing? Hmm. Yeah, what would look good? Would you like to buy... The Jordan X Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low Sneakers. I will tell you the price after you say yes or no. I am I think I'm probably out on them. Okay, good. You just saved yourself $2,232. Hi, how you doing? Wow. Good. This is from good the website that I'm looking at. Yep. So, or you could buy the Nike X Travis Scott Air Max 270 React Cax, Cactus Trails sneakers. Those actually look pretty cool. I like the look of those. Uh, those are only $418. Oh, so I, I wear my shoes too much for to be paying these yeah, exorbitant I, prices. I have no... If it's wet out, if it's snowing, I'm wearing shoes. I have no need to become a shoe guy. Yeah. I, I would like to, like, I think I like shoes to have cool. Yeah. I like to have good shoes. Yeah. But, but I just, you're right. I, I they, at the end of the day, they are just shoes. I, I got to wear all. them. I got to wear them. That's a good take. All right. Uh, Creighton. They beat Marquette, but they didn't have Tyler Kolick, but they didn't have Oso Iguodaro. What kind of tiny baby win was that? Also, I saw that Nebraska and Creighton fans were yelling at each other over the weekend because Creighton fans were claiming that Nebraska's one loss at home was to Creighton by 30, and Nebraska fans were going back and very nerdily checking them that they only had won by 29 points. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> okay, now let's put the poll question out there, Josh, just to make sure people weigh in on this. Poll question is 2930. <laughs> okay. Because I I actually think that it is. I think 29 is 30. You know if you're, you're going to say gonna lose this. If you're going to say 29, you might as well just say 30. Josh, is 39 40? If you lost by 39, did you really lose by 40? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. If you lost by 29, did you really lose by 30? Yes. If you lost by 19, did you really lose by 20? Yes. I need you to understand. If you lost by 9, did you lose by 10? Yes. yes. But people scrolling on their phone are going to see, is 29 30 and go, no, those are two different things. No. No. 29 is 30. 29 really is 30. Poll question so there's, is up. Is there's no 30? need to go back and say, actually, 29 is how many you won by, not 30. I feel like we might revisit that poll question at the end of the month. 29 is, 29 is definitely 30. Just like 39 is 40, 49 is 50. Guess you get over it. It was bad. It was a bad loss at home for Nebraska, or is it a loss by many points at home by Nebraska? They lost by one to their, or they lost by 30 to their rivals. The one game they lost at home the entire year. You got to sit there and eat it. Just like Creighton fans ate it last year when Nebraska beat Creighton on the road. That happened. We, everybody just had to sit here and take it. People forget. Sometimes your rival beats you by 30. It was 30. Joel, Joel tweets in. Yeah, good one. Joel, go ahead and read that Joel tweet. February had how many days? Not 30. You don't know ball. 
Ed writes in, is this like the yellow and brown conversation? I forgot about that one. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I don't know, man. I Shades think 29 off. is 30. Travis says, no, it's not. Accuracy matters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Chris of Montana has a good point because we're in the sports gambling universe now. Definitely. And what if you're what if you had Creighton by 29 and a half? And then it's not 30. That's for sure. Yeah. Talk to them about this. But Creighton was actually much smaller favorites than 29 in that game. I believe it was around three. Mm. Big difference there. But Chris of Montana generally agrees with me. He says, unless you're gambling, then the points count. But besides that, you're right. Derek writes in, does Vegas agree that 29 is 30 and 39 is 40? No. Vegas is not included in this conversation. Raven. Hi, Raven. Ask a woman if 29 is 30 or if 39 is 40. Should we call a woman? That seems like a terrible idea. (laughs) How do you feel when you, you, I mean, you feel the same, right? Your isolated point is correct. (laughs) However, when you bring it to the masses without context, (laughs) you're going to get flamed. As the kids, not getting flamed. Not getting flamed. You're gonna. Bullet point. Bob tweets our emails in. I B P B. Connor thinks twenty nine is thirty. Connor also tells some people that five is seven. No, I don't. Five and seven is definitely different. Way different. Luke writes in, if I take $29 to old man Doug, will he give me $30? <laughs> Banks in Vegas. Banks in Vegas. Those are the people that think that 29 is different from 30. Just keep but outside of bank, just Banks in Vegas. Just Banks in Vegas. If we're talking about score differentials, Josh, how many points did Nebraska lose to Ohio State by, to in uh, 2016? What was the question? How many, I, sorry, that was a horrible sentence. <laughs> by how many points did Nebraska lose to Ohio State by in 2016? I'll give you a clue. The, sco- the final score was 62 to 3. 60. How many points did they lose by? 60. They lost by 60. You're damn right they lost by 60. They did not lose by 59. They lost by 60. I'm sorry that Nebraska always ends up on the wrong side of these things. But they lost by 60. Imagine. Tommy Armstrong died, and then he came back heroically back onto the field. Imagine a Buckeye fan saying, yeah, we beat Nebraska by 60, and a Nebraska fan going, no, it was only 59. Yeah, No, you would never say that. Yes, you beat it. You won by 60. Won by 60. Anyway, thought I'd chime in on that one real quick. Uh, Tyler Kolek. Okay. Is Tyler Kolek going to be okay? That oblique thing. Define okay. Now, he's going to miss the rest of the regular season. Smart call by them. They play Seton Hall and UConn to finish off the year. Can he read? Um, I didn't. I saw, I saw only one Tyler Kolick adjacent can you read sign on Saturday. I liked it. I'm glad they got it into the building. I'm glad it was all there. It did not say if you are Tyler, if you're reading this, you are not Tyler Kolick. But close Great sign. Great sign. And then we learned before the game that Oso Iguodaro was going to be out too. And I don't know how you guys thought about it. Like, maybe my basketball brain works different than everybody else. Maybe I know ball or maybe I don't know ball. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But my first thought was that really changes the cap. That really changes the equation for Marquette. And I'm not like, I'm not saying that that means, hey, look, you take out your two best players and you should you know, you should lose. Like it was the same thing with Bruce Thornton um, for Ohio state against Nebraska last week. Oh my God. You take the starting point guard out of the game. I don't think, wow, Nebraska needs to be able to win that game because they don't have Bruce Thornton. I think, whoa, that totally changes the prep. That totally changes the, the, the chemistry and alters how this game might work. It was already going to be that way without Kolick Creighton, had had to have prepared for Kolick not being there. And then they found out before the game that he was not going to be there. But at the same time, they found out that Osoto Iguodaro wasn't going to be there either. He's basically their second guy. He he operates, I mean, he's not the point guard, but he's where the offense starts. And especially he'd be the offense starting 
point without Tyler Kolick. So it completely, they become a complete wild card. And they're still a super athletic team with a lot of good players. Joplin was incredible on Saturday. So like I was a little concerned when I learned that Marquette was going to be without Iguodaro and Kolick. But maybe I'm a Creighton homer, you know. Like, You're also always scared. You're scared for the hometown team all the time. You think so? Yeah. Am I scared? Well, maybe not scared, but you're always like, okay, here's the path to a loss. Like, oh, there's desperate team. Scared. It was a scary thing. Yeah. It was, it was because it also, I mean, there's also expectations that go into it too. Like what happens when you find out that Kolik and Iguodaro aren't going to be there? The line shoots from three and a half to nine and a half. And then it's like, oh, now you have to win on your home floor against the number five team in the country. Forgive me. That See, just seems like a pressure pack situation sure. that, that I don't love. Um, and I thought it would be a good game without both of those guys. And it was because it took Creighton out of what it wanted to do. It moved clock Brenner way. I mean, Creighton had to figure out a lot of other ways to a get rebounds and B you know, prevent Marquette from getting shots at the rim. Um, and I thought they had a really good plan for it. And Creighton uh, obviously wasn't prepared for it because they couldn't have been. Nobody, nobody knows what you're going to do if you don't have those two players on your team. They're the most impactful dudes. So, like, somebody asked me the question, do you think Creighton could go on the road and play with a really good team without Shireman and Kalkbrenner? I think it'd be, I, I, I think that'd be a difficult puzzle to handle. Yeah. Some guys getting some minutes. Well, you that, just, well, you uh... just, well, that, but like, you just wouldn't know how they would attack it. Yeah. What would they do? Right. And um, I don't think Creighton's probably depthfully as talented as, as Marquette is. Um, but I, I thought it would be an interesting look for Creighton. And it was huge crowd pop at the end. Um, we're probably still not talking enough about how big, how good Baylor Shireman is. He's like a lock, lock stock first team all conference guy. He might be the conference player of the year for my money. He is for how he's been playing over the last couple of weeks. But once again, Creighton Homer. Um, I would agree. And I think this team is peaking at the right time. Uh, at, and they have the week off here where they kind of have a meaningless for them Villanova game at the end. And unless you really desperately want to be the two seed instead of the three in the Big East tournament, I don't think it makes that big of a difference because you're going to run into Marquette in the semifinal anyway. Who knows if they're going to have Colic by that point. Um, but Creighton's either a three or a four in the NCAA tournament. I think you'd obviously rather be a three than a four in the NCAA tournament. For the same reasons that Nebraska would rather be a ten and a seven than an eight or or a nine, you just don't want to run into the ones as soon as you possibly can. Um, but um, you know, found a way and and got some awesome contributions for, I mean, from each of those guys who were honored. Right, Farabello had a had a sweet moment with a with the layup, a couple of them down the stretch. Shireman had some you know crazy plays during that game, and of course to kind of seal it. And then um, Kalkbrenner, you know, had the had the pull up, had the chin pull up at the end on the dunk. That's right. You know, I tell you guys, and 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 you would not believe me from watching Creighton just in a normal game, because I I hear people and the way they talk about Kalkbrenner and his energy, and I hate it because I see the way I see how impactful he is to the, to the team. Um, like they'll be like, man, he just it, he just never looks like he's trying. He always kind of. Kind of Eeyore's, you know, he kind of does a little bit of that. He's got bad body language. He lumbers. He lumbers a little bit. Um, you should, you, you should, you would never mistake a Ryan Kalkbrenner scream, right? You could hear him from miles away. He does it all the time. He's the loudest guy out there calling out defenses, what they're doing. Um, and like he's, his energy is, is pretty infectious when, He's like obviously bringing it to the table, right? And he got a little bit of that on Saturday, which was really cool. And he and they got to be honored in front of Creighton uh, fans for the for the last time in that building. And then uh, Nebraska will take over for the tournament starting in a couple weeks. <laughs> Theoretically. Theoretically. John writes in. Hi, John. You don't think Creighton can be a two seed in the big dance? I don't. They'd have to win the turn, the Big East tournament, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't like their chances to do that. No, I, I don't. I don't know how UConn's going to approach MSG. Yeah, you know, 
But like that is going to be a grind to get. You're, mm-hmm. you're going to play somebody good on the first day, then it's Marquette, and then it's UConn. Yeah, I mean UConn's vying for a one seed. They'll probably take it pretty seriously. If now if UConn gets bounced in, in their semifinal, then why not go do it? You know, yeah. Creighton's had their problems in that game before, so they could theoretically get there. I don't like their chances too. They're probably a three or four. Aaron writes in on the on the Marquette point that I was making earlier. Hi, Aaron. So Marquette is without their two best players, and it worried you. That's funny. No, I I already I tried to cut that off already. I heard, I, I know how people were going to react to that. I know it's kind of off the wall, but like, I, I I just put myself in coaches and players' shoes, and I think like, wow, this totally changes the the chemistry and the prep for this. Yeah, maybe worried isn't the right word, but just. You don't know what they're going to do. It worried me and from the perspective a of card they're without their two best players, and then all of a sudden it's a game who against the number five team in the country that you like have to win, otherwise mm-hmm. it's a terrible loss. And in no other scenario that does that does that make any sense. You lost the number five team in the country, you have to win. Like no, nobody would ever say that. <laughs> um, so that's from the perspective. That's the perspective from which it scares me. Maybe I used some bad wording, but I felt like I explained it. Makes sense. After hours, Jimmy writes in. I, oh, hi, Jimmy. He says 59 is 60, but 29 is not 30. Whoa. I'm not ready to make that delineation between the two. I think 29 is indeed 30. All right. Uh, we'll come back. Sam McEwen will join us on the other side. On the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Spring sports update. Spring sports are here. Creighton Baseball kicks off their home campaign tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. versus UMass Lowell at Charles Schwab Field, Omaha. For more information, to purchase tickets, or to follow along all things Creighton, visit GoCreighton.com. And that's your Creighton sports update. 1620 The Zone proudly supports Creighton Athletics. Where to watch college basketball just got easier. 72 Table and Tap is offering $2 Coors drafts with a purchase of a Coors Cup. Paired with one of the biggest TVs in Ralston is a slam dunk. 72 Table and Tap is just south of Ralston Arena, so stop in before the concert or come watch the tournament. Indulge in some smoked wings, a goldfish breaded pork tenderloin, tasty bar food, pizzas, and sandwiches. There's a reason customers keep coming back. 72 Table and Tap. Eat, drink, gather, and repeat. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. If you're having problems in the bedroom, talking about it is the last thing you want to do. Same goes for hair loss, anxiety, or even depression. That's where Hims comes in. Through Hims, you don't have to talk about it. You can do something about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start where you can find a variety of potential solutions for the problems men face every day and save up to 95% on generic alternatives. The entire process is 100% online, making it incredibly simple, straightforward, and above all, private. If prescribed, treatments made using clinically proven ingredients are shipped directly to your door in low-key packaging. So if you're experiencing ED, hair loss, anxiety, or problems with your general health, you don't have to go to the doctor or the pharmacy or spend all day talking about it. Just go to hymns.com slash start and do something about it. Get started today at hymns.com slash start. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash S-T-A-R-T. Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is your home for the big game. We're in the middle of the best time of the year of basketball season with meaningful games every night with 40 TVs and massive dual projectors. The games have never looked better. Pair that with their award-winning char-buffed wings and $7.99 Monday through Friday lunch specials. Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill has everything you need. 100 173rd and West Center Road, and for takeout, 162nd and Maple. Spring, it's the reward for surviving another winter. Fernando's, it's the reward for any day that ends in Y. Great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. 
Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. Tickets for less, best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. All right, welcome back. Basketball fever in full force. We're debating the difference between 29 and 30. Nothing better when these two programs are both barreling toward the NCAA tournament. Sam McEwen joins us now on the 42 Degrees, the source hotline. Sam, good afternoon. How are you? Hey, I'm pretty good. How are you? Good. Uh, How did you enjoy the uh, the basketball over the weekend? It was good. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it was fun to fun to uh, watch Nebraska finish off its home season and, uh, you know, do, do things the way they wanted to. And of course, uh, if there's a, if there's a more enjoyable team to watch than Creighton, I don't know what team that is. I, I really don't. Maybe Arizona. I don't know. Creighton, Creighton's the most fun team to watch in college basketball. So every time they take the court, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of an adventure. Um, uh, and they usually end up on the right side of the right side of the ledger. So, uh, you know they're they're a joy to watch in Nebraska. You know Nebraska's going to get there. They're going to make the NCAA tournament, which is which is very cool for them. I saw a lot of conversation last night about. I mean, obviously, I mean with Kase and the way the the crowd reacts to him, and and there was people talking about how he was. You know, is is he their the favorite player um, in this period of time? Um, where do you where do you think he goes in the mix of? maybe not necessarily best Nebraska basketball players of all time. I don't think he probably belongs in that conversation. Um, but Fred Hoiberg was talking about this too, just in the sense that, you know, how, how the fan base feels about him and how he kind of ignited the program a little bit with his energy. Where, where do you think he falls in that conversation? Among favorites, very, very high, you know, probably in the top five ever. He just, uh, he's a, uh, he has a great personality for the sport. He, and there's not, um, and it's guileless, right? Like he's not, he's just having fun. This, this, this isn't, this isn't trying to make any sort of statement against any players or anything like that. And so, you know, he made the, the and one and he kind of goes into the crowd. <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen very much in college basketball. It really doesn't. Uh, it just, just doesn't happen. That's more of an NBA thing. And, um, you know, so he's, he's a showman. And, and, and I think people deeply appreciate, uh, the way that, the way that he is. And, and so he, he invites people into what's going on on the court. He's not a miser. And, uh, you gotta like that. You, you gotta, that, that, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of the stuff of life. And I appreciate that he's able to bring, you know, bring people a little bit of joy. So he's very high on the list. I mean, as I, you know, I follow Nebraska basketball since. The early '90s, right when they were really, really good. Um, you know, I'd say Teron Lou is probably the other player that I, I guess, I thought of. Whereas, like, that's probably the other guy that you feel that way about. And Lou didn't. Uh, Lou wasn't quite like that on the court, but you know, you felt that way when you watched his game. Maybe Piakowski, uh, but uh, but yeah, Casey's way up there in terms of that. And he plays on uh, our, our town. Tell our columnist is going to kind of talk this week because he knows he has the institutional knowledge to go all the way back, and he's going to talk to some some folks who also know of where this Nebraska team ranks. It uh, it ranks very high. Obviously, that's a commentary on the lack of success within Nebraska basketball, but but it ranks very high in in the, in the school's history, and and uh, of course, it would probably be come number one or number two if they won an NCAA tournament game. Yep. And uh, we're just a couple weeks away from finding out if that'll be the case or not. Uh, you wrote, uh, it was a big conversation yesterday. Um, I saw you tweet about this and I felt like it was coming up in the, in the rewind. And sure enough, there's a blurb about Caitlin Clark and, and how the, <laughs> how bad TV networks might feel about themselves. that they let big 10 rights go away. Some specific yeah. TV networks when they couldn't have access to all of this, the Caitlin Clark, like, shooting star of the last i don't know it, it's 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 been building for a couple of years now but specifically the last month or two here where it's just been it's been shattering numbers across 
across television networks. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, uh, ESPN ABC bowed out of that conversation in the summer of, I mean, it's been a while now, uh, the summer of 22 is, is really when the deal got done, right? So, like, it started in summer of 23, but it, it was kind of finished in the summer of 22. And at that time, I don't think anybody really knew what Caitlin Clark was going to become. She was coming off a second round tournament exit against Creighton. She was certainly a great player, but I don't know that anybody was thinking about her that way. Everybody, I think, was talking about Paige Beckers at the time. Well, she's the real one. Um, And, of course, she's gotten hurt a couple of different times, and it's just a different player than Clark. And and then Clark's, you know, um, sort of star just took off uh, in the NCAA tournament last year. And then coming into this year, just something changed. It was a completely different phenomenon, and everybody kind of knew it. And uh, I think she just has an unusual number of fans. And ESPN and ABC has not been able to show any of it. And, and you know, and, and they backed out of Michigan, Ohio State football and, uh, and all those things. Like, they've just got the decision they made because they didn't have much of a choice, I think. They, they decided to own the SEC and the ACC networks and own the entire inventory for those leagues. And they couldn't have known at the time that the ACC, you know, is probably going to, if it isn't going to fall apart, that it's become sort of a secondary league. And so, um, I'm sure ESPN and ABC will be will be back at the at the at the uh, the front counter when this deal comes up in six years. I mean, I, I the Big Ten will be back on that network, and I don't know what network will lose the Big Ten. Probably NBC, but you never know. NBC probably has the best production value of the college football games that I've seen. To be honest with you, they've done a good job, and they're they're staying ahead of the you know the subpar announcings. I mean, they they moved. Collinsworth kid off the game, yep. but now Collinsworth kid is just not going to do anything collegiately. He's going to go do the XFL or whatever. And and NBC was wise to to make that decision, and um, so they're trying to to beef things up. But you know, I mean, Caitlin Clark, and guess what? There's a player at USC who is just as good as Caitlin mm-hmm. Clark, They're very very close to it. Her name's Juju Watkins, and most people haven't seen her because um, US uh, Pac-12 plays on Fridays and Sat Sundays. Uh, that's when they play their games generally, uh, and they have like a travel thing. And so most people have no idea who she is. She's going to be a first team All American, and to watch her play is something special. She's a little different from Clark, but she's got very similar range, and she has the potential to break all of Clark's records. And I'm not kidding. And she comes to the Big Ten next year, and it's the same deal. <laughs> she's going to be on. She's going to be on in the Midwest constantly, and on CBS and NBC and all these other networks and. ABC ESPN is going to be frozen out of the next great player um, in Juju Watkins. It's it's kind of fascinating to be honest with you. Well, and it's all also happening at the same time. Now I don't I don't know if Britt Prince is going to be that to Nebraska, no, but I don't think she's going to be Juju Watkins. But but she, <laughs> um, you know, it comes in with a significant amount of fanfare, home state, you know, and four four titles, five star, you know, type of recruit. I don't I agree with you, Sam, but. You know, maybe in a in a small sense that she kind of what whatever it takes to get people to the games. Um, right. You know, that's that's kind of what it is for Nebraska. Yeah. So Minnesota, she got hurt this year, but Minnesota's got a player named Mara Braun, Mara Braun, and she's really really good. To be clear, and I, I think Britt Prince is you know probably got that uh, capability. Uh, I wish I knew how to pronounce her first name. Mara slash Mara. She. Uh, you know, she was like a five star as well, and and so like I would say that that that's kind of where you know Brit's game is, and it's it's really really good. Like it's you know fifteen points a game, six rebounds, five assists, kind of thing. I think, and so you know one of the best players in Nebraska history if he's able to come out of the come out of the gate like that, and uh, that's what I would anticipate. Um, I think I think Nebraska's got a great player, there. and if Widener is healthy. Mm-hmm. And certainly, the hope is that she is. Then it's a completely different backcourt, completely different team. You know, I, I, I and they're certainly probably going to make the NC tournament. I think they will uh, with Jazz Shelley and and Darian White and and Callen Hake and Logan Nisley um, as their as their primary guards. Maybe I'm missing somebody. Kendall Moriarty. 
these are all these are all great players. And, you know, and, and Jazz obviously is probably going to be second team, but you know, if, if Widener's healthy and then Prince comes in, you have two players who can get to the rim, and that that's what really separates you um, as a college basketball team is when you're able to start. You don't have to rely on the three point shot. Yeah, and you're not going to lose to teams you shouldn't lose to. Right. Um, it's ironic, but but actually, Caitlin Clark does not need to rely on her three point shot. She does, and you could argue that she makes them from so far away that it actually changes the calculus of yep. of the defense. I think it really does it changes the gravity of the defense because she can make them from forty feet. But what's special about her is if you went out and 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 guarded out there, oh, she's just low by. Absolutely, and she's she's faster what, than basically anybody else with the ball in her hands too. She is. And so that's one of the challenges, you know, like when she'll go to the WNBA that I don't know if she's going to get 42 foot shots, but, but, uh, but she will, she'll get a lot of the rim and so that's what you need. Uh, it's what Ohio state has, what certainly what South Carolina has. South Carolina's not a great three point shooting team. South Carolina's a little different from most teams in college basketball, but, um, you know, it's, it's certainly what a lot of these, the very best teams. Uh, have that. You know, USC is one of the best teams, and they have Juju Watkins, and she's able to get to the rim, I don't know, 12 times a game, and maybe make five or six of them, and draw some fouls. And, I mean, it's just very hard to stop. And so Nebraska needs that. Um, you know, you'd love it if the player was 6'2", for 5'11", Widener 5'9", there, thereabouts, but, but they're going to be good additions uh, when they come back, and you know, Britt's certainly a winner. I mean, she's never, she's never really lost a big game in her life, but that will help uh, this program. And so, you know, they'll, they'll have to hit the reset button a little when Jazz is gone. I mean, she's, she's a great player. But, but I think they can kind of keep what they've got right now going and maybe even win a game or two more. You just never know. Me too. And the ceiling gets a little bit uh, little bit bigger. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald is with us. Uh, Sam, what do you think about a couple things on, on football here? Um, what do you think about the, uh, the slogan and the sloganeering, the – Three more chasing three for Nebraska football this year. I think it's good. I think you know, certainly they're gonna they're going to uh, talk a lot about those games that they lost last season and and why they lost them and how they lost them. Of course, that needs to be ingrained in the culture. Um, there were some things, especially as it related to you know carelessness with the football in the fourth quarters of games. Two games that they won against Illinois and Purdue was some of the most careless ball handling you'll ever see. Yeah, uh, and Nebraska won the game, and they turned the ball over. I think against Illinois three times and Purdue twice. And, uh, just you know, uh, it things just didn't didn't go very well at the at the quarterback position for Nebraska in the fourth quarters of games. And you know, there's it's interesting. Like we could sit there and talk to Matt Rule, and we will. We'll talk to him tw- you know twenty seven times or whatever before the beginning of the season. Um, but the essential question that really, really has to be answered is it's just not something that can be answered um, until the games are played. Yeah. I mean, I could tell you that the culture was going to be better last year before they played a game, and then, you know, you watch it in the first half in that Minnesota game, and you're like, Minnesota has kicked Nebraska's butt for like six straight years, and here's Nebraska flying around like a bunch of madmen, and we hadn't seen that for years against Minnesota. Minnesota had just sort of moved like a slow boat you know, through the water against Nebraska for many years. And then last year it was different. You could tell that right away. But but the thing that Nebraska has to get better at and change, you just won't know it until you see it in the fourth quarters of games because the quarterback play um, held them back. And it's a lot of pressure on Harburg and Rayola and Kalen. You know, like it's a lot. They're going to have to shoulder a lot of it. and. Uh, you know, we'll just see how it goes. It's going to be really interesting because obviously I, I enjoy talking to Matt Rule. I don't have that many like big overarching questions for him though. Like yeah. it's more about here are the finer points. You can see the culture. Now Nebraska has to do it. It's kind of about the football. It's not about the morals. Which is good. It, it is good. Yeah, it, it's good. I, I think we would all like to see, and I'm sure they would like to see, an offense where you turn around, you hand the football off, and your running back gets four and a half yards of carry. And you're not having, we could talk about this all day. <laughs> Ideally, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to hand the ball off your running back 
Maybe he's got a lead blocker. Maybe he's got a puller. Maybe it's his own play. And you're able to you're able to grind out a first down after three carries. And if I was going to say, here's one thing that Minnesota football has done really well over the last six or seven years, it's that. They haven't won all the games. Obviously, they looked like jack-o'-lanterns against Michigan last year. They looked terrible. <laughs> and they, they were embarrassed. And they were embarrassed in some other games, too. But by goodness, if you look at what Minnesota's done over the last seven years, they've been able to hand it off to Mo Ibrahim or whomever else they have back there. And they got a guy that can go for 200 yards because that line can block. And that's what Nebraska needs to do. And then the quarterback play needs to be better. You know, those are the two things that you really think about. All the other pieces seem to be in place. I, if I was going to pay, if somebody's going to ask me, who's the guy that's going to make the biggest jump on this team? Year one to year two, I'll I'll give you a tricky answer, Tristan Alvano. I think he's going to end up being, uh, you know, a twenty four out of twenty eight kind of guy, and making a couple from fifty or beyond. I think that kid's going to figure it out, and they're going to have a weapon there. It's a question of can you run the football when you want to run it without having to get cute with the quarterback or without having to hand it to a wide receiver coming around you, uh, and can your quarterback, you know, manage a drive? That's right. And manage a drive. And last year, Trevor Purdy had the one at Wisconsin, but everything else is just late in the game. So perhaps just could not manage manage football drives with their young quarterback. Yeah, the idea the idea for the quarterback in a situation you want to put him in is like I, I, this is oversimplification for sure, but you know, don't screw it up. Instead of hey, and this is how it was with Sims last year, right? We're just going to put everything on your shoulders, go make some plays, run around like, and it crumbled immediately, predictably, oh. right? And so theoretically, when you have more talent at the position and a better apparatus around them, it, it works better, right? For sure. And, and, you know, I'm sure that the way that they looked at I don't, one of the things I would like to talk with Rule at length about is just like walk me through some of the moments late in games last year or even late in that first half against Colorado and just kind of tell me what, what the feedback was and what, what people were thinking. Uh, when they're making some of the decisions they're making, because uh, there was so many circumstances in multiple games where, uh, you know, you could just get sacked. You could, yeah. you could run, you could run out of bounds, throw it away. And you don't make the, the mistake that, uh, that Sims made over the middle against Minnesota and, and the one that Chubba made against Iowa, it's a truly unnecessary uh, mistake against Iowa that we never got to hear from Chubba about. Uh, and, and, you know, things like that, like there, there's just, there's just moments of that season. I'm sure that that's eaten up rule inside, taking up time in his brain. And, um, but at the same time, there's, it's almost like a golf swing. Like, you know, you think about a champion golfer that plays really, really good golf and in, in the U S open, and then they come to 17 and they, they make a bad swing mm -hmm. and it like cost them the cost them the U S open. And, that stuff's hard to, it can be hard to fix, you know, like you just have to go out and actually do it better next time. And, and I'm sure Nebraska will be in those moments. The challenge is Connor, we've been watching seven years of this where they, they can't close the deal late game. Uh, at some point I'll have a story that from, you know, starting in 2017, really 2016, but starting in 2017, all the way through last year, just all of the final opportunities that Nebraska had on drive oh, no. and how often those drives ended up in turnovers. Um, almost all of just, them <laughs> yeah calamity you know you go all the way back to 2017 Oregon and Nebraska's got a chance to tie that football game late somebody doesn't get a block and Tanner Lee fumbles and you know Tanner Lee throws an interception later in the season that cost him he did beat Purdue but that you know cost him play and Adrian Martinez has a snap go through his leg mm. at Northwestern and you know just all of these unbelievable circumstances you know luke mccaffrey throws a ball and it hits someone's helmet and it goes up in the air like all these opportunities they had to, to finish out games and they just didn't get it done and they you know they had um they had turnovers and so like all those are the things that you've got to change and um that's not going to be easy to do unless unless you do it maybe the uh maybe the slogan should have been no calamities no more calamities yeah. in the fourth quarter. It's a little yeah. wordy at that point. No, no question. Um, <laughs> there's just I don't know. It's it's uh, there's circumstances where you know the the 21 Oklahoma game. There, you know, 
a 55 seconds or 80 yards away. Yeah, like that. You could take that one out. That's fine. Yeah. Um, But then you've got a situation where the tide against Iowa in 2019. 2019, yeah. And, you know, and all of a sudden Luke McCaffrey comes in the game and, like, the clock's running. And then on third down, Adrian Martinez could have let the clock run out, but he ran out, out of bounds. bounds. And I, I mean, just all these things. Everything in 2021, every single game. Oh, yeah. I, and, and, you know, this is just my opinion talking here. Maybe my gut feeling. I think they got the best quarterback coach they've had in there in a long, long thinking time. So I think the guy they got right now that Rule just hired probably is the best they've had. Like, if you're just talking, like, quarterback coaches, best they've had since Sean Watson. And I know not everybody loves Sean Watson, but then you ask Joe Gans about Sean Watson, and he, and I'm convinced by Joe Gans' testimonial of how good of a coach Sean Watson was, because Joe Gans was a good quarterback. And so, like, but this is the best one they've had in a long time. Like, it's not, uh, and maybe Mark Whipple is that guy, too. I don't know. Mark Whipple didn't really fit. The, the demeanor of the program at that moment. But, you know, it's either Whipple or it's Glenn Thomas. And, and Whipple was, you know, kind of surly when he was here. So um, I think Nebraska's quarterback play is going to get better. I think there was an issue last year with the play, and I think there was absolutely an issue during the Verdu years, you know, Mario's years. And I love Mario, but that just didn't, that just didn't work. So um, I think they're bound to get a lot, a lot better. I really do. Like, I think hiring that guy is going to help them a lot. Sam, thanks as always, my friend. Have a good week. Take care. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Always in-depth thoughts. We didn't even get to the playoff stuff that he wrote about because it was a question that we were sort of swishing around in our mouths last week. Like, playoff? How, how do we feel about the, the idea of the playoff changing around Nebraska, even though, like, it, you know, as it, Implicit really relates to the Big Ten, where the Big Ten gets AQs or more AQs than other conferences, and of course other conferences hate this. But like you're the idea we that we talked about last week, you're in the cool kids club, but like you're so far away, your brain so far away from thinking about that right now. Like how much does it need to matter to you? And what should you think about the playoff? Um, Sam sort of explored that idea in his Monday rewind, which is really good, but um we'll take the quarterback talk of course, as well. Uh, we'll come back. So one question that I laid out there earlier for people that we didn't get to, we got five minutes for it next. Kesei Tomonaga, the, the Kesei Tomonaga legacy question. The case for Kesei. The case for, or, or is it against Kesei? I guess no, I feel about Kesei. Mm. Ambiguously. We'll discuss that when we come back. Next on 1620 The Zone, but one more reminder for, speaking of potentially basketball players from local universities participating in large basketball tournament coming up. Uh, I'm sure you want to watch it and I'm sure you want to watch it in a very cool location. How's the stadium swim at circle Las Vegas. Okay. That sounds like it's a pretty good deal. How about backlot backlot tap house at Exarbon in Omaha. Okay. Pretty good deal. We got chances for you guys to win watch parties to both of them. 1620, the watch party live at 1620, the zone. Dot com powered by Circa Resort and Casino and Backlot Tap House. I'm a fabulous driver. The Connor Happer Show. I'm one of the best friends you could ever have in your life. On 1620, The Zone. I hate you. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. And I thought the quote from Ted Carter when he was asked the controversies that have followed Ross Bjork. Carter said, a calm sea never produced a good sailor. That made me laugh, too. <laughs> to which I would say, Thank you, it makes a big difference, though, when the guy you hired is the one throwing the bombs in the ocean <laughs> to make rough seas. Unsportsmanlike conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Mostly cloudy, mild, and breezy for your Monday with a high today in Omaha, 57 degrees, and north northeasterly wind gusts possible between 20 and 30 miles an hour. Mostly clear and cool tonight, breezy early out of the north. Overnight lows near 31 degrees in Omaha. Sunshine to get you started Tuesday, becoming partly cloudy, mild, with a high of 60. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. 
More with Connor and Josh after this. We're going to have an extensive professional relationship, my man. On 1620, <laughs> The Zone. Coffee comes from a plant. Tea comes from a leaf. Kratom comes from a leaf. Kratom may seem new, but it is an all-natural product that has helped people for centuries alleviate discomfort, anxiety, and so much more. At 42 Degrees, we carry the largest selection, highest quality Kratom, so that you can receive all the benefits of Kratom. At 42 Degrees, we care about your health, so ask for our Kratom at any of our multiple locations. For hours and locations, go to 42degrees.com. Buy your mom's house. Hey, Omaha dog lovers, get ready for more wags and more fun. Hound HQ, your dog's favorite spot for daycare, boarding, and top-notch grooming is now open. At Hound HQ, there's plenty of space for a pup to sleep, play, and everything in between. Plus, our expert groomers are here to ensure your furry family member always looks fabulous. Join our pack on Facebook and Instagram at The Hound HQ, or visit our website, thehoundhq.com, and sign up your dog today. Hound HQ, more wags, more fun. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit circusports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Howdy, Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time, time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620thezone. A couple items from the feedback portion today. We love feedback. It's the year of transparency. It's the good and the bad, Josh. Okay. Lucas writes in on YouTube. Hello, Lucas. Listen to your Dune pod, Josh. Excellent work. Oh, thank you, Lucas. You're my favorite person in the world. People today. forget that Josh has a pod that he kicked me off. And Gotta watch the movie to be on the movie he pod. He talked about Dune 2. Dune 2, Dune 1, the old Dune. Oh, you talked about both Dunes. Dunes. All the Dunes. So many Dunes. Go ahead, pimp your pod, Josh. Tell them. I go 80 minutes on the three Dune movies that have been in existence, the one from the 80s and the two more recent ones, how they got made, how the versions that didn't get made, and their legacy Where can we sci-fi find? cinema. Where, where can we find the pod? Wherever you get your podcast. I also believe it is in the Connor Happer feed. Nice. I, I believe. Sneak one in there on yeah, Sunday. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, after hours, Jimmy came up to me at the Creighton game. He goes, hey, you're, what, are you, what are you doing? You're riding your producer. He's working <laughs> on Saturdays. And I go, I didn't tell him to do anything. Let's do anything. And I figured, I, I thought about it a little bit. And then afterwards, I came up, he's probably just talking movies. He's probably doing his pod. Talking movies. There it is. That's right. So you were. It wasn't anything that I made you do. Just No. no. Right. Oscars next week. Other piece of feedback from old man Doug. Hi, old man Doug. I sent you three great poll questions and you used none of them. Did Josh cancel me as well as my poll questions? That is not what happened, old man Doug. Although I could tell see him what happened. Why you would say that. Um see, you gotta understand, Doug, with the poll questions, they're not always on topic. In fact, right, they're preferably right. off topic. Is Frank Caliendo the best non regular guest you've ever had? One of our regular guests might read into that and like, oh, do they not like me? No, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to ruffle feathers. 
Uh, should Nebraska call it chasing four instead of chasing three? We actually spent 15 minutes on the show talking yeah. about that. You so, gave us a whole segment, Doug, you, which Doug. many would say is better than a poll question. I agree with that. And the third one, should Caitlin Clark's scoring record be compared to Pistol Pete's? He says Piston Pete's, but that's just a typo. That's fine. My vote is no. Why I, not? I just want to dig into that. Why not, Doug? Is is like, or is this going to be like a the oh the advocation of the three well, point shot? Lisa or something? Bluter, Lisa Bluter was talking about it. It's like, why do we have to compare it to what men did? And I'm like, I don't that's know. It's just the, do- it's no. just the highest number. Yeah, that's not like, what we're doing. Care. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just, it's just the highest number that anyone has ever scored, and it was the only number that she had left to break, uh-huh. so we used it. Yeah, that's why. There's no conspiracies it's, here. It, there's it, no men, women no. thing. There's no like, no, there's no, it's just, that was the number that was there and she broke it. What a terrible assessment of your own player's achievement. Lisa Bluter doesn't understand anything. Just <laughs> take, literally take one step back and realize what happened yesterday for your player. I personally <laughs> wonder if it's Big Ten protocol to have Jake from State Farm shooting the t-shirt Gatlin gun on the floor during the game. I wonder. Feels probably like an improper benefit. I wonder if that's protocol. Okay, Doug says yes, men and women are different. This isn't men and women. This is all humans who have ever played basketball. People. No one has ever scored more points. People. All right, we have two minutes to talk about this. Two minutes. Would you like to retire Casey Tomanaga's jersey if Nebraska wins an NCAA tournament game? My first, your first reaction tells me you think no. Well, no, I, my first question is, I actually, also think no for I'd the record. Like, I'd like to respond with a question. Okay. What, who's, who's in the rafters right now? It is Teron Liu, Eric Pikowski. Uh, um, those are the two I would have thought of. Oh gosh. I, there are two others. Stu uh, Lance. Uh, I think there's one more. Because they just did Lou a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Gosh, there's one more. Um, Dave Hoppin? Dave Hoppin. Dave Hoppin. Oh, gosh. Maybe I'm, maybe, maybe Pikowski's not on there. Dan's dad? Um, okay, hold on. Now Tyron Lou, Eric Pikowski, Stu Lance, Dave Hoppin. Okay. It's right here on Huskers.com. Okay, got it. Slash men's dash basketball dash retired okay, dash jerseys. Good. All right. Now you got that answer to that question. See, I wasn't that bad. Um, Nebraska's all-time leading scorer. Two guys who did great in the NBA. Okay, so. Okay, so Tominaga. And Stu Lance. Um, no, feels like. Casey. Feels like there's something else we can do that's like not quite jersey retirement. There's got to be an in-between, right? Oh. I don't Tominaga know. I, Knight? I don't know what. Um, not like I just don't think he has like the requisite. I, I get what he means and what he represents. Yeah, and I, I, I guess I don't balk at that as much. But like, I just don't think he has the requisite. Like, if you would pull it up and look at his stats at the end, you'd be like, well, he was kind of a bench player for a year, and then he became a pretty good player, but not like an astoundingly good player. And that lasted a year and a half. Like, there's just not enough there for for Keisei Tomonaga to be with, with the all time yeah. greats. Um, but I do understand the sentimental feeling and the in and like the energy that he has brought. That's why I I think he will always be like a remembered Nebraska basketball player. Um, you he's know, he's going to come up in and guys he, naming dudes. He, no, I think he elevates above that. Okay, like I think he elevates it. Like people always be like Andre Almeida. It's like yeah, okay, he's better than that. You know, okay, like okay. Jorge Brian Diaz, Shang Pink, like he's way above those guys. Um, he would he would come up in the guys that you really can't name in the guys naming dudes because mm-hmm, be- they're too good. Because they're too good. Like, okay, if you were in a guys naming dudes to basketball ball off with a dude who was like Taran Petaway, you'd be like, you're out. You're out. That does not count. You are out. You're not playing the game right. So if you named Casey Tomanaga, you'd be kicked out of the competition. And that's maybe the honor that he gets. I don't think he gets his number retired. But if they win an NCAA tournament game, Asian Joe writes in, does he get a bobblehead? How about a bobblehead? Yeah, maybe a bobblehead night. I mean, he'll never have to buy another beer in Lincoln. Yeah, I'd say, like, like, give it a couple years. Like, give him whatever he does in his pro career. Bring him back in a few years. And 
he is uh and and have K say night. It'll be sweet. We could all remember that great 2024 sweet 16 team. <laughs> Will it into existence? Bull question say what's watching the other side on 1620 the zone. The best way to catch all the action is on 1620 the zone and no line for the bathroom. <laughs> Like eating out? Like saving money? Then get to Cobb's at 180th and Center, Shadow Lake Town Center, or 72nd and Jones for their daily specials. Tuesday is $3 off all burgers and sandwiches. Wednesday, buy any specialty pizza and get a one-topping 50% off. Then Thursday, all wings are a dollar each when you order 10. And this just in, all Cops locations now offer their own delivery service. Click CopsPizza.com to see the menu. Cops pizza, and so much more. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Omaha Maverick finishes the regular season at home against North Dakota at Baxter Arena. You can listen to the games Friday and Saturday night on News Talk 1290 Coil. It's UNO versus North Dakota this weekend on your home for Maverick hockey. News Talk 1290 Coil. Full questions at Happer Show on the JTEC Construction Zone Twitter feed. None of Doug's are up there. but None of Doug's, but don't worry, Doug. We still like your potential poll questions. Doug went pat. He, he went above and beyond. Yeah, a, he got a, a whole segment. He produced the show. Is it a drug reference? Now, what we were talking about for context was when people point to their arms after they make three-pointers. It's not. It means ice in the it's, veins. It's not. Yeah. It's obviously not a drug reference. But 57% say it is a drug reference. Sure. Pull question number two. Can you be just a little belligerent? I think you're either full belligerent or not at all belligerent. That's a good point by you. I had not realized that. Yeah. Nobody's. Seven, well, he's being just a little belligerent <laughs> he's over there. He's getting a little belligerent over there. 77% say Yes, you can be just a little belligerent. Oh, really? Okay. And I got to retweet this. We got to get this out here. People got to see this. Our final poll question of the day. Most voted on poll question of the day. Is 29-30? Josh? In the the context in which you discussed it on the show, yes. I feel like you came around uh, eventually by the end. No, I was on your side the whole time i just i you're gonna get you're gonna lose in this poll question because it just people are gonna see that and it's so easy i don't care what the people say i just want i just want your opinion oh okay my opinion matters most yes i i agree with you team happer look i can't before we get to the results of this i can't watch my tigers play because anthony ben boom's at the plate right now oh, anthony ben boom and i can't watch it for interesting reason. you bring that up because anthony ben boom's gonna be on the show tomorrow at noon Future friend of the show, uh, former Reaver, former Blue Jay, former, former many many things. Many things. Anyway, is twenty nine thirty? Yes, twenty nine is indeed thirty. But so far, sixty one percent of you are currently saying no. Twenty nine is not. 30. Uh, 
Those are the poll questions. Josh, what are we watching tonight? Uh, we don't have a lot tonight, but I will give you what I have. I don't think we have a lot this whole week. NBA doubleheader on NBA TV. Clippers at the Bucks, 7 o'clock tip-off. Milwaukee's won five games in a row. Remember when Doc Rivers completely sucked? First thing he got there? Well, now he's won five in a row. What say you now? Uh-huh. Followed by uh, the number one seed in the West, the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's right. Taking on the Los Angeles Lakers at 9.30 on NBA TV. College basketball doubleheader on ESPN. Number nine, Duke is on the road at NC State. Texas travels to number 11, Baylor. Will they have an emotional letdown after their big win over Kansas? Definitely. This weekend. It seems Texas, like Texas, handshake meme, emotional letdown. <laughs> well, no, Baylor. Beat a Baylor, Kansas. handshake Baylor, yeah. meme, emotional letdown. And then, uh, Connor, this feels like a show you might be into. 7 o'clock on Fox the season nine premiere of Master Chef Junior. Okay. Get Gordon Ramsay yelling at some kids. Twelve chefs are presented with their first challenge, an emoji cookie, and have just one hour to prepare a dish that represents that emotion. Yeah, I am super into the idea of Gordon Ramsay yelling at kids. Yeah, yeah, I thought you might. And because we talked about it earlier in the show at 6:30 tonight on TNT, it is the greatest showman. Growing up in the early 1800s, P.T. Barnum displays a natural talent for publicity and promotion, selling lottery tickets by age 12. After trying his hands at various jobs, P.T. turns to show business, uh, turns to show business to indulge his limitless imagination, rising from nothing to create the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Banger of a soundtrack. Uh, Yes, yes. Good stuff on there. Soundtrack better than the movie. Josh, thanks. The movie's fine. You should do a pod about it. Oh, um, I don't know if it warrants a pod, but. That's the show. Thank you, Connor. That's what we're watching tonight. And if you missed anything, you can find it all at 1620thezone.com. The crossover is next. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. There is only one constant in the universe, and that's change. Brent Rasmussen of Mortgage Specialists. I'm sure many of you remember the incredibly low interest rates that were available only a few years ago. Well, things changed. Now rates are higher, but would you believe me if I told you there was a time when people were paying double digit rates? And that's the thing, everything changes. Rates go up, rates go down. So if you're waiting for the perfect time when rates drop before you buy a home, you might miss out on the home you really want. So when you think about it, what's a thing today might not be a thing tomorrow. See, change is good. I'm Brent Rasmussen. Call me at Mortgage Specialists, and we can show you all the details. Mortgage Specialists. Driven. Trusted. Reliable. Click mtg-specialists.com. And MLS number 5918, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, friends. Kent Pavelka, courtside, getting ready for this year's matchup between the average roofing companies and the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. The average roofers are just that, average at best, not very impressive. The rooferees, above and beyond the opponent, more dependable, service that exceeds the norm, good sportsmanship, fairness, and integrity. You know them, you love them, and they're ready to win for you. Make the right call with John Higgins Weather Guard. It's tip-off time with the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Make the right call! Don't miss this week's Zone Deal. This week's half-off deal is Copal Mexican Cuisine. Get $50 in gift certificates for only $25. Copal Mexican Cuisine, home of weekend brunch on Saturdays and Sundays with all-day happy hour on Sundays. Come check out Copal Mexican Cuisine, 129th and Maple. Zone Deals go fast, 9 a.m. Friday, 1620thezone.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. 
Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com.